on, everybody? Welcome to episode 166 of Two Dudes and Some Bullshit. The date today is Monday, October the 3rd, 2022, 6 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My name's Dave McRae, coming to you live from the Voice Man Studios in Toronto, Canada. He's Tony Michael in Atlanta, Georgia. And tonight, we are re watching Halloween 2018, kicking off the, the, the great journey to Halloween ends. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live! We are live! Wherever you are around the world, episode 166, Halloween 2018, the highest grossing slasher movie in motion picture history, $254 million at the worldwide box office. And here we are. We, Tony, and we didn't see we didn't see a fucking penny of that shit. What the fuck? I know, like, what the hell's going on here? I, I, I want my residuals. Hey, listen, I donated to their Indiegogo campaign, and I didn't get my perk, so I I, I don't know what the hell is going on. Ah, we we, we 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 need to have a little chat with Jason. Yeah, Blum. totally, totally. Like, <laughs> Not Voorhees. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, I I bought a Blu-ray. I you know chipped in for a T-shirt. I I bought all the perks, and you know, I mean, right? they, I, yeah, they raised like ten million bucks on their Indiegogo. I just don't fucking get it. What the hell's going on? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Can you imagine? Know, How you doing? Man. What's up, bitches? The sure. lead up. We are less than two weeks away. We are exactly eleven days away from when it all ends. This when shit is. Uh, this shit's coming up faster than me losing my virginity on prom night, man. That's right. That's right. It is. It is. <laughs> yeah. It's. Uh, I'm excited. Um, I saw the little NBC thing. I'm sure you did too. I did. Yep, um, I did. Um, yeah. I mean it's kind of more of like longer shots of what we already have seen. Um, oh, uh, Laura really Burns see is anything. back. Laura Burns is back. You might want to just dash out and come back in again. She's that, that little, that son of a bitch. That's all right. Tony will be back folks. Tony will be back. Um, what we were talking about was, to well, I'll let Tony digest on that. Uh, welcome folks. Well, Tony fixes the uh, issue. Sometimes these things happen. It's not a big deal. He will be back. Um, but we are watching Halloween 2018 tonight. Now we have watched this on the show. Actually, I think we've watched it once or twice on the show, I think, if I'm not mistaken. This might be our third time. But if it's not our third time, it's our second time for sure. And we thought, you know what? Why not do Halloween 2018 this week? Next week, we're going to try and slip in Halloween Kills. Halloween Kills. And then we're hitting Halloween Ends Hard, uh, which is going to be very interesting indeed. We're going to watch Halloween Ends live here on the show as well. So um, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Halloween Kills, of course, has made me appreciate Halloween 18 a lot more. Um, I am, uh, I like this movie. I mean, I've always liked the movie. I I, it, I don't love it. I don't think it's amazing, but but certainly I, I think it is uh, a far better Halloween movie than Kills was. Uh, that's my opinion, of course. You're free to disagree. Relax. Calm down. Uh <laughs> Um, but, uh, I just think structurally it's a, it's a better paced movie. Uh, it's just a better film overall. Of course, as we know, Halloween ends is sort of going back to that, you know, smaller sort of claustrophobic, uh, kind of movie in a similar vein that Halloween 18 was. So I don't know if we're going to like the story. I don't know if we're going to like the creative direction of the story and Corey and all this kind of stuff and all the choices that they're making. However, hopefully there'll be enough nuggets in there for us to sort of really uh, glom onto. But yeah, we're going to be watching Halloween 18 tonight, uh, which is going to be interesting. Now, if you have super chat questions that you want to get in, uh, feel free to send them in throughout the show and, and we'll try and answer them as best we can, because obviously we're watching a movie tonight and, uh, you know, we don't want the stream to be like four and a half hours long. Uh, so feel free to get these super chats in, uh, throughout the show and we'll answer as many as possible throughout the stream. And then we'll get to the rest, of course, at the end of the stream, Tony is back. God, that bitch, man. I know. You know what it is? You know what it is? Because she knows. She knows, she, knows. she knows I'm watching her tonight. She I'm knows. Gonna watch, huh? I'm going to watch Unfriended uh, after we do our stream here. That's Someone's my other, watching me. My other horror movie. 
Choice, and I'm telling you, ever since we watched that movie last year, our streams have been fucked up, and Laura Burns has been She's haunting this fucking stream. She has. She, she has. has. She has been. She has been. Um, so Halloween 18, I was just saying that I think this is the... It's at least the second time we've watched this on the channel. It might even be the third, although I'm not 100% I think it's sure. Your third. I think it might be the third. Uh, but this is the big lead up. This is the big lead up. Halloween ends is ending. Halloween is ending as we know it, as we know it. Of course, there will be future Halloween movies somewhere down the road, but connected to the 78 original with Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode, uh, I think this is really it. And um, it's going to be interesting to see how it all folds uh or how it all kind of comes to a conclusion are you ready for for it to be sort of over at this point like are you ready for kind of the you know the halloween mayhem to to be done uh, you know yes and no there's a bittersweetness to it um yeah. it's a it's fucking crazy how fast time has flown you know going back to when you know i first met you when i was doing youtube videos talking about the release coming up release of halloween 2018 i mean that's like actually that's longer than six years ago that's like eight almost eight years ago because it, it was announced in 2016 that they were doing it so that's six years no wait ago, no yeah. that's six years ago that's holy six years math. ago yeah, yeah holy <laughs> bad math wow <laughs> that's all right that's if all my right. math teacher could hear me you now what? Like, it's what eight, it's <laughs> what eight, was that math again <laughs> it's eight years in some universe so right exactly wow six years ago so anyways um yeah i mean just like it it's crazy we were doing those videos then we we met through youtube and yep. then i i you know i went off and started doing ho horror pictures and doing them again and shit and then you know we came up with the idea to start doing this show and um yeah it's just bonkers so uh between this uh, movie we're watching tonight kills and uh ends it just like it's crazy that we are what's it today's the third we're like 11 days away 11 you know, days from away this from this it's it's just crazy it's just gone by so fucking fast that's why like i said this last week i you know i told folks enjoy the moment we're in it's true you know because we don't know when we don't know what you know, obviously, we all know there will be another Halloween movie. When? I don't know what. No. I have no idea. Um, but as far as this, like you said, this connection to Laurie Strode and Jamie Lee Curtis and everything that we've known since the 1978 film, and that's connected to as part of this universe, whether it's the Halloween to H2O timeline or Halloween to Halloween Curse of Michael Myers timeline or this, like it's all... Whatever they do next is going to probably have nothing to do with any of this. Um, so there is a bittersweetness uh, to to the ending. Uh, obviously excited like everybody else. Um, curious, you know, I, I do have, you know, my reservations on some of the things that they're going to attempt in this, uh, you know, farewell. Uh, but as I said from the get go, just, uh, you know, give me my good screen time with Michael and, uh, you know, uh, like I always try to do with my girlfriends, let's go out with a bang. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you knew exactly. that was coming. I, 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 I did. I did. <laughs> I knew. I knew there was an exclamation point. Um, exactly. Bam. No, I agree. I look. I mean, it's it's uh, it, you know, it's hard to believe that uh, that I was. Uh, I jumped on here in 2017 and, and I had no intentions on, on building, uh, well, I mean, again, I've had the channel since 2006, uh, but right. I had no intentions on building a community. And, and I look back on the last five years cause I, I jumped on, I think the first video I did, uh, in terms of Halloween in this way was in May of 2017. And I was just shooting it on my phone and I was talking about what I wanted to see from the new Halloween movie and what I think they wanted to, you know, what I think they should do. Uh, and I had no idea that at that point I was going to amass nearly, you know, 30,000 subscribers and, 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 and fund a, you know, a, a movie from these people and, 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 you know, shoot a film and, and yeah. create a community and, and do these shows and, and, and meet all sorts of, you know, wonderful people, including yourself. And, and I had no idea that that's what it, I just, I, I did not start doing this to do this. I just right. needed, 
uh, it was my girlfriend who said, you know, you should really go on there and do that kind of thing. And, and so I have her to thank for, for that. And, and, uh, and, uh, but at the end of the day, I had no direction. I just really was using it like a vlog. Like I just needed to get it off my chest. I needed to, instead of writing it down, I needed to just get it out. I had all these things I wanted to say about Halloween that I didn't see other people talking about. And I wanted to get my point of view out there and thoughts out there. And, and that's all I was doing. I mean, that's why you never heard me say, and don't forget to subscribe and click that notification because I wasn't doing it for that. I, I just needed to get it out there. And if somebody watched, great. If nobody did, well, that's okay. I still feel good because I got it out of my system. And now, sure. you know, you look where, you know, we are here on the channel and it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. I, I mean, obviously it's not the end of the channel, of course, but it is the end of an era. It is the end of this chapter. Oh no, we're still gonna, it's we're, we're still gonna the, for talk sure. horror shit. For and, sure. You know, but and, it's the uh, end of this chapter, which oh, is, yes. uh, which is, you know, it's the end of yeah, an era. We're so not going to have anything new, which is why I think we made the exception, even though, like you said, we've watched the 2018 film twice. We kind of knew like, okay, we got to make an exception here because this is coming to an end. So let's, you know, do a nice little rewatch of, you know, the two that, you know, came out, you know, before ends uh, leading up to ends. Uh, Cause it'll be the last time. I mean, it's, I don't, I don't foresee us not ever watching a Halloween movie on here again, but it's certainly not going to be like this. No, 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 no. I, I mean, not unless, you know, there's some sort of <laughs> something. I, yeah. You know. And, and we don't even know what that's going to look like. Right. I mean, I, I, and, and I, you know, for, for lack of sounding, you know, fucking arrogant. Um, but I, 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 I think people are being too, um, uh, too, um, I don't know what the word is. I, I don't want to say naive. I I just think I, I listen. I mean, anything's possible, of course. But I I don't think we're going to see Halloween for a while. Um, yeah. I, I I just don't. And even if we do, what is that going to look like? Is it a series? Is it a uh? You know, is it is it a cartoon? Is it is it you know an animated thing? Is it? I mean, wh I mean, it, it's not like Halloween ends ends and then next year, wow, we're starting again. You know, it's it's not going to happen. It, it's not going to. Ha I'd be stunned if if, if, if that happens. It's well, not going to happen. There there's going to be a break. And I personally sure. think. I personally think. Outside of Season of the Witch, if you're going to see anything Michael Myers related, uh, whatever that looks like, whatever that is, um, I'm thinking that it probably, mm, I think it wouldn't surprise me if the earliest we see something is towards the 50th anniversary. For So not for another six years. You know, I, I, I think that's, or one, two, three, four, four, yeah. You're right. Six years. So I, I think that's probably the earliest that we'll, we we could see something, um, you know, because these movies are diminishing returns, guys. You know, I mean, they're 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 not like you know Marvel films that that continue to make billion dollars at the box office. I mean, every sure. movie that it's it it gets less and less and less the more they make. So you know, there's going to be a break. There's going to be a lull. They're going to let these three films marinate and, and, and find their place into the pop culture zeitgeist and into the Halloween sort of sphere. Uh, and then, you know, we'll look at where things are down the road. Um, but that doesn't mean that they don't shift gears into something else like anthology or season of the witch or whatever, but Michael Myers. I mean, if you think next year, they're just going to start over again. Well, let's start and tell the story again. Let's cast Laurie Strode and get Judith Myers and get Dr. Loomis. It's like, no, it's not. I know it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, I just want to get these couple super chats here. Sure. Oh, you forgot the nine in my five, seven, nine. I just noticed. Oh, that. did I really? Yeah. Oh no. I forgot the nine in your five, seven, nine. Did I really? <laughs> yeah. Oh got, shit! It's our, birth, it's our birth month and year, man. Oh man, no way! Hang on a sec. I wonder if I can change that on the fly. Give me one second. Let me see if I let me see if I can change this on. Yeah, the we were. Fly. Um, Dave was able to fix my Facebook link because I know some people had DM'd me on my real estate business account. Um, saying they had a hard time connecting to the link and I didn't know cause I'm still, I'm still a baby back on Facebook. I didn't know how this all worked that you could do like on Twitter and Instagram, the at, and then their name and you could still find the person that way. I was like, son of a bitch. So I was mm. like, I didn't know you can do that. Yeah, apparently you uh, can. Uh, one second, guys. I'm so that should make it easier for people to connect with me because I've been posting a lot of the new horror pictures like 
a bat out of hell for the last week and uh, appreciate those of you who have been uh, coming on board and uh, supporting the new content. And we've got some cool shit coming up soon too. Nice. Some fun nice. shoots. Yeah. Nice. Okay. One second. I've just fixed it. I just got to get it into the, uh, um, into, into the, hole, the that's what she said. Into the hole. Yes, that's right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, one second here. If I All could right. go a stream without making a sexual innuendo joke, that'll never happen. That's nah, not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Wait, wait. It wouldn't. Oh, wait. Why is that not? Did I not do that right? Oh, I wonder why it's not. I wonder if I can't do it while I'm live. Probably that's not. Gonna, I, I wonder if that's the case. Uh, oh, wait. No, I hit the wrong one. Here we go. There we go. Boom! Bitches! Boom! Boom! Bitches. I had to make By it a little way, smaller because it's quite... I, 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 I want to make something good. clear. When I say that, like, bye, bitches, or hello, bitches, that is, that is. if anyone's a Supernatural fan, Charlie. Mm. That That's all I got to say. Charlie, then you know the reference from now on that it's not meant to be derogatory. It's just... It's the character, Felicia Day. Love her. Mm. Loved her character on the show. And it, that was her, like, calling card to Sam and Dean. Like, what's up, bitches? Gotcha. Bye, bitches. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. So, yeah. uh, okay. So just a couple of these super chats so I don't uh, fall too far behind here. Uh, we got Cody Snyder sends in $10. Thank you, Cody. Says, my first super Cody. chat of October. Yes. Andrew Stevens sends in $5. Says, hey, Laura. Hey, Laura. Get your ass away from there. Talking about Laura Burns. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Uh, JJ sends in nine ninety nine. Says, what's up, Dave? I love this time of year, and I really hope Halloween Kills does the franchise justice and ends with it and ends with some class. Uh, I'm really hoping for Halloween 2018 vibes h kills really was a bummer agree with all that agree with all that my fingers are crossed too my man jj follows up with a dollar 99 says i meant halloween ends uh oh yes of course yeah i get what you're saying there uh matthew farisi sends in a very generous super chat of 1999 says i'm thinking david gordon green is implying that michael's evil presence affects people people seem to become obsessed and even change uh after being around him especially at length loomis sartain and Corey, all in unique ways though um i don't think it's that deep uh, I think this is just really about Corey having some sort of evil essence passed into him. Yeah. Really. I, th I think that's really what it is. Uh, but you never know. You never know. We shall see. All right. Let's start this movie, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Tony let's and I go. are paused at the uh, uh, at the seven second mark. The, uh, the Universal Pictures logo, the Universal uh, is just about to come over the horizon of the earth here. That's where we are paused. If you want to watch along with us, this is Halloween 2018. All right, Tony, here we go. In five, four, three, Two, one. Ooh. And as we were saying uh, before the show, this has a great soundtrack. This oh, soundtrack oh, yeah. is great. Like just this opening here and just sort of the, the oh, it's, it's eerie and ominous. It's great. Even the one for Halloween Kills is, is, is really good too. Uh, we yes. see all the logos. I have both those on vinyl and I'll, I'll probably be listening to them more towards the end of the month. Um, but you're right. The soundtrack is freaking awesome. Oh, it's fantastic. Carpenter, Carpenter and his kid and the other dude, who, who's the other guy? His godson, uh, uh, Daniel Davies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they did a great job. I'm, um, looking forward to, uh, looking forward to hearing the modern version of, um, Lori's theme because I thought I had heard it, but I did not hear it. I, mm. I was misled. Um, it was one of these YouTube accounts that says it's the theme, but it actually turns out to be a person who makes music themselves and mm. did a variation of it. So mm. I've still yet to hear it. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing it too. Um, I was fortunate enough, obviously to see this at the world premiere right here in Toronto at TIFF, the Toronto Inter international film festival, myself and Bruce, that video, by the way, if you want to see the whole, uh, the whole kind of, coverage of that day just youtube dave mccray after the show is done of course youtube dave mccray halloween 18 world premiere or something like that and it'll come up it's about a 20 minute video or whatever and bruce and i head downtown toronto you watch our day and you sort of you know we build this excitement towards going to see the movie that evening we go out to dinner and and we cover the whole thing and then of course we're we're inside the theater and we're like right next to the red carpet and we can 
can see Andy, um, not Andy Matichuk, but uh, um, uh, Judy Greer and Jamie Lee Curtis. I got a great shot of Jamie Lee Curtis. And and um, we were like, I think, five rows from the sort of the screen. So we had great seats. And so check that out if you're interested, if you want to see uh, the coverage of the world premiere of Halloween 2018 right here in Toronto. It's a great vid. Dana and Aaron, why are people, I, I don't understand this. There, there, there are people, that, I guess it's just fans being fans. Um, but there are people that, because we didn't actually see Aaron die per se, although we did, we did see the, him get the, sh the shit kicked out of him. There are people mm -hmm. that speculate that, I mean, I've been asked, do you think Aaron will return? Do you think Aaron will return? I'm like, why? Why would he return? What would be the motivation to bring him back? No, he's dead. No, he probably went to the hospital and died five minutes later. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah. Now, I like the Sartain character. I like the Sartain character. I just don't like what they did with him. Yeah, up until the twist. Up and uh, he was fine uh, until the, 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 the twist in the movie. And I was just like, really? We're going down this road again? Like, we've mm -hmm. been here before, you mm -hmm. know? Well, and, and here's the thing is... The twist obviously threw a lot of people for a loop. Now, there's a lot of people that like it and there's a lot of people that will defend it and that's fair, that's fine. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that don't like it and they have their reasons and, and, and they can, you know, express those reasons as well. I wonder what would have happened if they had followed through on the twist. You know what I mean? Be, I, I wonder if the as twist far as well, I wonder if the twist doesn't work because they abandoned it so quickly, so fast. I know that kind of seems ironic, but I, I, I wonder if it if if it would have if they stuck out stuck stuck, stuck with it a little bit longer. Yeah, and, and then kind of built it and and had Sartain go to the house and and because he wanted to see what it was like to see Michael and yeah. Lori together. Like I wonder if, if they had just followed through with it. I wonder if it would have sat better at the end of the day. It's interesting. I don't know. We'll never know. Tie your fucking shoes there, uh, Aaron. But I like Dr. Sartain. I like the way he talks. He sounds like this. He's got, he's got great gravitas in his voice. <laughs> I remember when I was in the theater watching this, thinking, ooh, God, just a little, don't go, don't show his face. See, if it was me, and these are nitpicks, but if it was me, I would just be show, showing like even less of his uh, face. I would sure. show maybe, maybe like you barely see his ear, but the focus is really on his shoulder. That's what I would I wonder do. if they're going to show his face in kills. Oh God, I hope not. Yeah, I really no. hope not. Nick Nick Jean or Jenny sends in four ninety nine says love the Facebook page Tony joined last night super talented my man keep it up love you too Dave thank <laughs> thanks Nick thanks man appreciate it appreciate you uh, following and supporting the content and then Chad Power sends in two dollars says you can yo can you help me get my SAG card Chad Power <laughs> no Chad I can't sorry Chad. You can feel it, can't you, Michael? Now, there's a lot of people that like to think that, you see, you see, it is the mask. The mask is evil. He knows it's there. Everybody's going crazy. It's like, no, it's not the mask. It's not, it's not the, the mask in and of itself isn't evil. It's what it symbolizes to Michael. It, it's what sure. it means to him. That's why he's having this reaction to it. And we don't know that you know, these patients are reacting to the mask. They may be reacting to, they're sensing that Michael is starting to get irritated. Even though we don't see it, they might be on a different wavelength and they're starting to sense that something's happening within Michael, even though to the average person, he just looks like he's standing there, right? And maybe that's what they're picking up on. And Michael is having this reaction because he senses that mask is there, not because the mask is objectively some evil force or entity, 
see. It's, it's what it symbolizes to him. It's what it means to him. It's affecting him. Uh, I, I think that is the correct interpretation of this. Sure. I, I, I don't think you're going to get to ends and find out that, you know, the, ma- it, it, the, the mask itself the is evil. Yeah, here it comes. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if that was the, 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 <laughs> I still love this intro with the reverse effect it's on the great. pumpkin. It's great. Yeah. I was watching uh, the Slaughtered Lamb movie podcast the other day, and they were doing things you didn't know about Halloween 2018. And I stand corrected, but I believe uh, they said that this was actually a pumpkin that they left out for like days or weeks or something what, like they that. They did a time lapse with it. Right. And, and yeah. so they filmed the pumpkin sort of naturally decay and rot, and then they just reversed it. And I thought, wow, that's, that's really good. That's really cool. My guess would be a time lapse because there's no way oh, you're going to sure. get this this type of smooth motion, and I could tell it's a time lapse. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's well done. It's cool. That's that's dedication for yeah. you. And the symbol of this too, right, is that you know Halloween had been dead for a long time, uh, and this is sort of the resurrection of how. And of course, it's the typical no you know pun. pumpkin that we know. <laughs> yeah, no pun. Yeah, but it's 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 carved. In, Dave said resurrection. He's a fan of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's it's you know the carved pumpkin that we know and love and and uh, obviously it just you know it means that we're back it's reborn rebirthed uh tabitha timestamp is 836 837 838 839 and counting that's right directed by david golden green directed by tony michael and dave mccray that's it what? right there we're oh, making a halloween that. movie folks there you go How does three thousand dollars sound? Oh, your, what the your, fuck? Your viewers, Don't give any money. Your blood viewers damn. would freak the fuck out if that was true about making a movie. Oh, They'd be like, okay. "Wait, what?" Just, yep. Be the greatest Halloween movie ever. Oh. Oh. I'd, we'd make it better than the original. <laughs> <laughs> Quite ambitious, am I? Well, <laughs> Just a little. You never know. You never know. You never know. I do like the. I mean, I, again, I will say that I do like the pace of this movie. I like the, you know, the, um, the fact that Lori is, uh, you know, a recluse and she's behind these gates and she's out in the middle of nowhere and, you know, I, I always they, like that. Like I've never uh, had I, an I don't issue know if with it's it. True, but I heard that they just tore down this house in South Carolina that yeah, they used for her home. They did. They did. It's been. I think uh, it's been torn down for. At least a year, maybe a couple years now. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they have, which is unfortunate. But there are videos online uh, of people who were able to get in um, and do some uh, some location videos before that happened. Blah blah. Oh man, that's me at Starbucks. You at Starbucks. <laughs> That's me at Starbucks during the drive-thru. Yeah. Because they can't hear me half the time and I've got to hang out the fucking door. It's true. It's true. That's exactly how I want to live. Recluse out in the middle of no man's land. It's a way to do it. Nobody can bother me. Yeah. Turn into a grumpy old man. <laughs> That's the way to do it. I'm halfway there. You are. I You're am. halfway there. Halfway there. I'm living on a prayer. Lori, what's the boogeyman? Tommy, so there's no such Go thing. Go back to bed. There's no such thing, Tommy. There's no such there thing. There she is. There she is. Television's most exciting game show host. Hey there, Lori. <laughs> Are you Laurie Strode? Just remember, folks, and you heard it right here first from Randy in screen. Jamie Lee didn't go legit till she showed her tits. What would you do if <laughs> when they when she opened the door and they're like Laurie Strode and she just blew them away? Just that have been awesome. <laughs> and then the credits roll, and that's it. <laughs> ah! I would have loved it. 
Would have been great. Got to say, man, that's all the wigs that Laurie has been wearing in these three films have been fantastic. I they have, totally but I will looks say like this. real hair. I, I do like a, a woman or a girl, well, no, a woman in this case now, um, with short hair. I've mm -hmm. always found that, especially if they can pull it off, like yeah, Jamie Lee some, can. Some people Jamie can. Jamie Lee, just, she just like an H2O. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, I'm I'm a fan. You know what I mean? If a girl can rock, Kira Knightley is another one who could rock the short hair look. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If a girl can rock that look, yeah, that that's going to get all my cylinders going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know why. Let's go to my album. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. No, nah, just a bit of feedback. It's just because no. it's a cable thing. I got a cable wrapped around something, but it's fine. It's not the end of the world. I can fix it later. Um,. You'll be locked away until the end of time. <laughs> Someone know what happened to uh, this actress that plays uh, Dana R Reese? I forget her name now. Reese something. I don't know. Somebody. I met her at the 40th convention. You did? That's right. You yeah. Did. did a little interview with her. Very sweet. Nice woman. Um, oh, you know who I'm connected with on Facebook now? Um, the girl who gets killed by Michael in the house in this movie. Oh, Marion um, Singh? Yeah. And oh. I connected with her. Marion's great. Shout out to Marion Singh. Yeah. Seems like a nice little sweetheart. She's nice. Very nice. Yeah. I think he might speak with you. Get the fuck out of my house! She says that? What the fuck? Aaron looks like like when he gets the shit kicked out of him, that kind of last shot of him lying on the on the floor with his head all mm. bloody shit. Looks like he had like an all night bender. <laughs> right? Yeah. But I do I, but I, I do like and I and I even said this in my epic Halloween 2018 review uh four years ago I said Jamie Lee Curtis fucking kicks ass in this movie I mean she's she she she, she she's good in all these movies really at the end of the day I mean she's out of all the problems that you might be able to pick with these th three new films I think yeah. Jamie's Jamie Lee Curtis's portrayal of Laurie is not one of them. Like, I think she's, uh, her, her, she's I mean, solid. yeah, she's solid. I mean, you might not, you may not like the direction of the character perhaps, but, but she's, she's great. Yeah. But yeah, I think if there's, did he say I got peanut butter on my penis? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Oh man, I got peanut butter on my penis. I got peanut butter on my penis. He might as well just said, oh, God, I, got, I got peanut butter on my cock. Uh, hey, well, we, uh, cer Allison, we, we, we certainly know that? who wrote that joke course i guess i just find it listen i just i don't know it just seems very yes the word actually is penis but it just yeah, it well. feels dick I, dick and fart jokes don't belong in a hollow well okay i guess they do depending on the type of character you're writing it, um it just you know what i mean so like well, for example when i think of bud from halloween 281 I can picture him saying there's peanut butter on my penis because the way the character of Bud is written, you know, he's got the amazing grace, come sit on my face. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. he's got all those lines in that movie. So you sort of expect a line like that from Bud from, you know, the father here, uh, who we only known for about 30 seconds 
we're already getting that. You know what yeah, I mean? I it's think like it, there's not enough time to warm up to know who the identity of this character is to already start coming at you with dick jokes. Right. And and, and maybe it's a culture thing. I'm not sure because I know, you know, there's some people that are like, what? I don't get the big deal. I yeah. think it it's it's for me because he's a father and he's in a parental position. I guess it's just the choice of a pe- I mean, Yes, that is the actual word, of course. Um, but I don't know. It feels almost like it fe- I don't know. It feels like it's inappropriate to say in front of his daughter. You know yeah. what I mean? And then you, you know, and that then you might too. ask. Well, There's yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But yeah. then you might ask, well, what would you expect him to say? And I think, well, I got peanut butter on myself, or I got peanut butter on my lap, or I got peanut. Like, why penis? You know, it, it just feels like it's played for. It's just like, uh, you know, I'm not expecting him to say dick or cock either. I just, uh, it just feels, I don't know. It just, and it's the way he goes, oh, I got peanut sure. butter on my penis. You know, it's the way he trails off. It's, 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 it's so, it, it is what it is. It, it's put yeah. in there for what it is. And, and I just was like, oh, come on. Peanut butter on my penis. My, there's my, a, my, my little penis. There's a girl <laughs> that I'm coordinating a Halloween themed photo shoot with right now. Very similar to looking like Vicky. Mm, nice. Like when I was doing a side by side picture mm. of her, I'm like, you look just like the damn actress. Like, and, and there's like, they could be sisters. They've got similar features, blonde nice. hair, similar face features and whatnot. So, um, nice. Yeah. This of course is, is, uh, well, they've just done this now, but, uh, where they gave the, the throwaway line of, oh, that's just something my, uh, people made up about, uh, Lori and Michael being, they didn't even need to do that. It really didn't. They didn't, but I understand why they did. Um, I understand why they did. It, it's because the, the brother-sister arc is so embedded in pop culture. It's so embedded in pop culture that sure. I understand why they acknowledged it. It's a throwaway line, uh, but I, under, I I get it. I, I get it. I get it. I mean, I, I get that over, I never found his body. It's, it's like, oh, okay. He's burning to a crisp. He's never found his body. He shows up looking young and his skin is all nice and his eyes are all perfect. Fuck. Anyway, let's not talk about H2O. Cameron, Cameron gets his fucking ass kicked and kills. Yeah, he does. Yeah. One of my favorite kills in this run. Agreed. Agreed. It's actually One a really, really good kills. kill. One I of agree. my, I'd say my most satisfying kill in this run so far would be Judy Greer's character. That's very satisfying. <laughs> Um, I am still a little bit disappointed. I would have liked. Oh, PJ souls. I know. Right. Uh, her voice a little disappointed that Vicky, I I wish Vicky would have made it maybe till the end. You know what Mm. I mean? Till ends at least, you know what I mean? Um, go through this whole thing with her friend and you know, if she dies and ends, that's fine, but we don't get much time with her. And I did like the character, you know what I mean? It just, we, we got the walking scene. We get her babysitting the kid and that's about it. Yeah. And she's done. I remember um, when Allison looked out the window and saw Lori standing there. I actually kind of thought it looked funny. Um, like why is Lori just standing? And why is Lori standing in the, ex- how does she know exactly where her daughter's where, classroom is? Yeah. 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 Her, her granddaughter. granddaughter's. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get the it. little wink and nod to the original. We yeah. get it. Um, and this is not uncommon for, you know, when there is trauma in a uh, family, it is not sure. uncommon for the grandchild, uh, in this case, the granddaughter, to have a better relationship with the grandmother um, than the mother does. Uh, we obviously played into that into It's Me, Billy as well, not because of what they did with Halloween 18. That's actually a very common real life theme. Uh, and in It's Me, Billy, it was it's very clear that Sam obviously had uh, a closer relationship with Jess than than her own mom did. And there's reasons for that, right? There's reasons for it. Uh, but they played into those themes here, which is... Um, which well, is, there she works. is. 
Yep, shooting the mannequins. Linda, Linda, Linda Hamilton, yeah. Ripley, <laughs> Jamie Ripley. Laurie Strode. Ooh, what if in Halloween ends, Michael wins and chops off Laurie Strode's head with an axe? You I told you, like, you're going to hear, uh, you would hear I'm the gonna, loudest scream coming gonna, out from Georgia. I'm going to hear it. Like, There's Tony. <laughs> I'm going to hear it from Georgia. There's, everyone's going to hear it if yeah, that happens. Totally. <laughs> you're like, oh, there's Tony. She must have died. 100%. So if you didn't see the movie at that point, you're going to no. get spoiled. <laughs> January 22nd, 1979. Do you wish to give a statement regarding your former patient, Michael Mann? My suggestion is termination. Well, they definitely got drunk Loomis down. Yep. <laughs> De- yeah, he does sound a little drunk. Well, He's in line inebriated. to be gained from keeping evil heads up, stand up. It needs to die. It needs to die. My ear is he sounds he sounds a little inebriate. It, it actually I could totally believe it was Loomis. Like I, I think they've done a good job. Whoever did it has done a good job. I believe it. It's good enough that I go, yeah, I buy it. Sure. Sure. Uh but he does sound like he's had a few vodkas. Yes. But this is a so, great track. This track is great too. This is a great would have also piece been of a music. Good, this also would have been a good time to play Lori's theme too. For sure. For sure. Yeah. But this building. But you're right. It is a good, it is a good track. And anticipation. Yeah, I've always really liked this track from the Halloween soundtrack. Actually, I got the Halloween soundtrack right here on CD. There it is. On CD, though, not vinyl. But what is this track? This is. I got the uh, vinyl. It's just out of my reach. Nice. Mm. Don't have my glasses. I think this is. Uh, have you seen the vinyl? Prison the white montage, vinyl? Maybe. H- have I seen the what? The white vinyl. No, I this. haven't. All right, hold on. Let me get it. Oh, look, we have a visitor. It's uh, Paul the Pumpkin. Hey, Paul the Pumpkin. 11 days till Halloween kills. No, Halloween ends. Oh. Okay. 11 days till Halloween ends. Halloween ends. Halloween ends. 11 days till Halloween ends. Silver Shamrock. Oh, <laughs> I'm getting too old to turn my body like that. So that's the white vinyl. Oh, I have seen that. Yes, yes, I have seen that. That's nice. Uh, that's nice. And it- that's I think that's it. Oh no, they got some things in here that I never took out, like some little goodies. Mm. They got like a uh, oh yeah, that's right. They got I don't I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit it all on screen, but I'll just give you an idea. Mm. If, you, if you're someone who's uh pro Second Amendment, they got a Michael Myers <laughs> that's great. target practice. That's great. I love that, that. he came with. That's awesome. That's awesome. So in case you're just joining us, we're at the scene now. We are uh, watching Halloween 2018. We're 24 minutes into the movie, and we are at the scene where Allison and Cameron are having dinner with uh, um, Allison's parents, and Laurie Strode is about to walk in in a few moments. Oh. She's late. She doesn't give a fuck. No. She's late, 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 late. So both Allison's parents are dead. Here she is. That's right. The only thing I will say is that, yeah... Lori does call Michael Myers in this scene. I believe she refers to him as the shape. Uh, that's not something we've ever heard before. That was just something that was in the original script, <laughs> you know, um, like the original script from 1978. It's not something that was ever, you know, that's what Nick Castle is referred to in the end credits, I believe. I think uh, you're right. And Tony Moran is referred to Michael Myers, right? As you know, Michael Myers, because I guess there was this. Of course thought he is. He's, he's the one and only Michael. He is. He is. He is. I, I mean, I, I get it. Again, it's that thing where the shape is so embedded into the Halloween mythology now that, you know, when you hear her say it, it's a, a fan moment. You're like, oh, wow, she referred to him as the shape, you know? And who knows? I mean, 40 years in after all this shit. The only thing is I still feel and yeah, I saw him, the shape. I still feel and and again, I I, I don't want to spend time figuring out how you would do it. Uh, but I, I do and I've always felt 
I've always leaned that, you know, it, it, this, the depth, and, and again, everybody is different. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a mental health expert. How people handle trauma, people handle things in many different ways. And who am I to say that, you know, you're, you're, oh, just get over it. It wasn't that bad, right? I mean, who am I to say that? Everybody is different. However, I do agree from a storytelling perspective that the way Lori is and how it's affected her whole life and all the, and, and how it's just, it's been her identity for her entire life. You, 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 you do feel that it would, it would be more believable if Halloween 2 was canon. If, if the events of Halloween 2 from 1981, the massacre at the hospital, I mean, that whole night, not just her friends being killed and being chased across the street and, you know, defending the two kids she was babysitting and getting, you know, locked in a, uh, a closet and, you know, all this kind of shit. It's not just that. It's, it's, 20 minutes later, she's at the hospital and, and all the shit that goes on there and, and the chase scene there and the explosion and Dr. The, the, now that just, it just compounds and adds and makes this upheaval of her life more believable. However, you run into a conundrum, which is, well, that's the brother sister story arc was revealed in that. And we want to remove that. And Michael died. I mean, he's literally burning to death on the ground and you know, we don't want to pull a Halloween four. So what are we going to do? Sure. I get, I get why they didn't do that. Um, but I guess the excuse is she was so deeply affected by it. And back in those days, there just, there was not the mental health help. There wasn't the, the, uh, you know, the programs and, and the facilities that they have today. Um, and I guess she just spiraled out of control deeper, deeper and deeper into depression. And, and so, I mean, no, it's entirely possible, but I, I, I do empathize with those that go, ah, oh, you know, it would be a little more believable. And I'm like, yeah, I get hey, it. I get question. it. Question. Mm -hmm. How old would you put this kid? Oh, 12, 13, maybe. That's what I said. Everyone's you know, talking about how like this theory of <laughs> that Michael doesn't kill kids. And I'm like, he killed a 12 year old in the 2018 film. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause you got to figure this kid is at least 12 or 13. Now, if they're saying he doesn't kill little kids. Okay. Yeah. I get that. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think if you're 12 years old, you are not off limits. That's no, all I'm saying. No, according to this, you're not according to, I, I believe he was like, like he looks like he's around. He's a bit older than, the kids in Stranger Things season one. He's, he's like a bit older than Tommy and Lindsay were in the original Halloween. Right. So he's probably like, you know, uh, well, 12, 13. then again, then again, the kids in season one were supposed to be, I think like 11. So he's in and around there. He's like 12, 13, you know, he's like the kids in season two of Stranger Things or something. You know what I mean? He's like on the cusp of high school. Right. Um, yeah, totally. And of course, there's the song that was playing on the radio, which was some sort of version of Lori's I wish I had you all alone. Oh, someone Just did a recording of it. Someone did a recording. And that was the That's song cool. that was playing on the radio. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. Now. Yeah, you're right. I'm hearing it. This. Yeah, really cool. When I was in the theater watching this at TIFF, this was the first moment for me where I remember thinking, ooh, there's some, there's some suspense here. I like this. I like, you know, the headlight, seeing the kid out there, you know, seeing the fog in the headlight beams. We don't know where he's going. He's calling out to his dad. His dad's not answering. You know, we know there's people out there and there's no, there's no music but the music from the, the truck in the distance. And right. I like that. You know what I mean? So there was like, I remember thinking, oh, finally we're getting some, you know, there is some tension here. And then the moment that this guy goes, run, run. It's like, what the fuck? How bad is it out here that he's just telling me to do? Like he, he's a cop and he's completely like incapacitated. He's just like, get the fuck out of here. Holy sure. shit. Yeah. Run. Run. Yeah. I love it right here. Run! Yeah, that's so run, great. Run, Forrest, run! So great. And right now, you don't hear anything. Daddy! Just the crickets, right? Well, it's so you great. Know, like, real is, genuine. The soundscapes uh, that they've done at times, even in Kills, when Michael's stalking uh, Lindsay, you know, they yeah. just use the ambient soundscape. Very creative move because you totally could have used the shape stalks. 
Don't shoot. 19. He shoots him almost yeah. right through the heart. He does. But 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 that's good because you know when you are creating suspense, you know it's important to know when to use music and when, and not, when to not to use to music. Use and sometimes yeah. it's far more effective when you don't. It all depends. It all depends. But sometimes it's far more effective when you don't. Yeah, look at that, right? They fucking killing this kid. He doesn't give a fuck. He's like, come here, nope. you piece of shit. Come here, you piece of shit. You piece <laughs> of shit. shit. You piece You're of done. little shit. You're done. You're done. Well, I have that. I have that same argument with people, what you were just talking about with suspense and when do you, about not use, using blood in the horror pictures I create because I'd rather have you use your mind of what's going to happen next and you come up with that conclusion yourself to make you think rather than giving you the payoff in the picture, which I, you know, I'm not saying that blood doesn't work. It does, mm -hmm. but blood doesn't make it scary. You know, no, like when, no. when the photo I shared today of, you know, the Freddie picture where I have just Freddie's face in the mirror, looking back at the girl, you know what I mean? That's, yeah, that's creepy, one of my favorite that's, photos. That's, that's a so good. fucking creepy ass shot. Yeah. Um, Cause it's not something you expect and it looks, you know, so realistic um whereas like if i have her being torn up by freddie's glove yeah i mean it's a cool shot but it, it there's no theater of the mind and i'm like i'm like you in regards to that i want to play with people's mind i yeah. want people to think like shit what's about to happen and then yeah. let you decide for yourself yeah you feel in the blanks now this shot how here, do you like hawkins, as hawkins overall in hang on a run? second I'll, I'll tell you, as Hawkins comes up to this guy, seeing his neck, see that, that, <laughs> that was one of the, the, the things that I gave praise to this movie for. Again, overall, I was, overall, I was lukewarm on the film. I think I gave it like a C plus. Um, you know, I, I, I know that might be like, oh, Dave, you're so fucking, but listen, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm, I can be picky when it comes to Halloween. But having said that, one of the things that I did appreciate about this movie, and I've said it before, I'll say it again, is the fact that they used, uh, yes, you do see some on-screen deaths, but a lot of the buildup is the aftermath. And, yeah. you know, it's like coming up, like, like how bad, like what the hell did that? A bear? Like, I mean, how is his neck? It's, it's just the way his neck looks and everything. How bad is it that that's the end result? Like, who are we oh, dealing know, right? with here? Like, what... Who and what are we dealing with here? It's very eerie to just suddenly come upon, you know, these dead bodies in weird positions that they shouldn't be in. It's like, what are we dealing with here, Bigfoot? Like, I mean, what the, f a, a man did this? Like, what the fuck is going on? There's an eeriness about it. And I really like that. No blood, no gore. It's just the aftermath coming up, shining the flashlight, you know, getting closer to the bus and you got your shotgun out and just hearing the elements of you know nighttime and the crickets and stuff and you walk up and you just see that and it's like wow and maybe you have a little bit of sound you know you know maybe there's a little bit of soundscape as you you know um uh you know um uh uh what am I trying to say? Pan the camera over to the left or, you know, tilt yeah, the camera yeah. down, whatever, right? Maybe there's a little bit on the reveal. There's just a little bit, of, you know, tiny bit of atmospheric noise on the reveal. Maybe, maybe. But it's like, what the fuck? It is eerie shit. Imagine coming across that, knowing that Michael Myers has Crazy. escaped. It's like, fuck, man. It's well done. Oh, yeah, here he is. The most useless stooge character in the entire Halloween franchise. Still never answered my question. How do you like Hawkins? Sorry. Um, I like Hawkins as a character. I think uh, Will Patton is a great character actor. I think Will Patton's Hawkins should have been the sheriff. Agree. It, it would have made sense because if he had been with the force for as long as he's been with the force, at this point, at this stage of the game, I, I see, like, you know, at his age, he's likely to be retired. I know it's a smaller town and, you know, whatever, but, you know, it, it makes sense that he, now, obviously, because of what happened in Halloween Kills, I don't know, maybe he, Maybe he was unable to move up in the ranks. Maybe they mentioned something like that. I don't know. But when first watching this film, I remember thinking, yeah, look at this. What are we going to do? Cancel Halloween? <laughs> you wouldn't be doing that. You, you wouldn't do that. Anyway, I like Hawkins. I think he should have been the sheriff. Uh, it makes sense. He's been with... He's been with the department for decades. It only makes sense that he would naturally, at this stage of his life, at this stage of his career, be the sheriff. And then you have a sheriff with some gravitas and experience. Um, 
I just think Barker is useless. Not the actor. Omar Dorsey, I think, is the actor's name. I've seen him in other things. He's great. But the character of Barker is fucking useless. He's a, he's a, I can't believe he's back. I can't believe he's back and ends, you know, and he wasn't fired. I mean, he's just, oh God, I don't know. I'm still torn on this uh, gas station scene because I just can't believe that many people are that fucking clueless. They don't see Michael pulling up. I mean, I call me crazy, but when I pull up to a gas station, I'm very self-aware of my surroundings and mm. I know who's around me. So the fact that they're just totally clueless, the fact that they don't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, whatever. But I think, I think it could have been done at night. That would have made it more believable. Oh, I've I've um, said this from the very beginning that that this scene should have been at night. I, yeah. I, I say should. You know, it's a difference in creative choice. If it was me doing it, I would have written the film in a way and made sure that I pay attention to the timeline in terms of these characters getting to Haddonfield so it makes sense. I sure. would have had this scene and them arrive at the gas station at night because then instantaneously having the scene at night, you add atmosphere. Like, I'm, listen, yeah. you can add atmosphere, you know, during the day as well, but, but you add that... That, that dark, creepy atmosphere. And now everything is dimly lit. So the bathroom is dimly lit, you know, and when Michael puts on the mask, you can still have the same shot through the back um, windshield of the car. But, but it would be more shape-like with the light. hundred percent. And then you have that split lighting as he puts, you know, the mask on. It's like, what the fuck? Because that's the last time we remember seeing him is in that kind of environment. And there he is. Like, that just would have been outstanding. This works. It, it doesn't not work. It's just different, you know? Um, but that's what I would have done. I would have had this whole scene at night and the bathroom very dimly lit, you know, and she's trying to look up and you kind of barely see him and stuff. And uh, just, yeah, it's totally... Totally how I would have done it. But I will say, reaching over the top of the door and dropping a bunch of teeth, it's pretty creepy. <laughs> Gotta say, is. if I was sitting there taking a shit, not that she's taking a shit. That's not very She lazy. would have been taking a shit at that point. She would have. <laughs> listen, if she was. She would have gone from taking a piss to a shit in a matter of seconds. If she was peeing, I'm telling you right now, if she was urinating, okay, which let's just say she is, as soon as those teeth come over the door, Bowel movement city right there. Deuces like, would have been dropping. Deuces, <laughs> diarrhea. I'm telling you, it just that's 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 what would have happened right here. Right here, ladies and gentlemen. I look at his jaw. Like again, another end reveal. We don't see that happen. We just see the end reveal. And it's like, what the fuck? What are we dealing with here? That that yeah. that is the end result. What the hell? I mean, this isn't a normal fight or a normal confrontation. What the fuck? It's like a bear got hold of a fucking, you know, I don't know, deer or something. It's like, what the hell? They're mutilated. They're mutilated. It's great. Here come the teeth. Here comes the shit. Here it comes. <gasps> ah! Ah! Toilet humor, folks. <laughs> got to pull her pants up. Like, imagine this at night, you know, with a dimly lit light, maybe moonlight cascading in through the top of the window there. Anyway, it's not a big deal. It's still effective. It's still cool. But yeah, at it would have been awesome really, if he grabbed yeah. her and pulled her out and said, hey, you didn't wipe. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing that Michael says. First, That's first words ever spoken in like yeah. 50, 40 plus whatever years, uh, whatever the last time he said shit hey, was, comma, hey, you didn't wipe. <laughs> yeah. Hey, comma, you didn't wipe. Here it is. Oh. And and again, I I, I would not that, have. He took that crowbar shot like a champ. He, just he said, did. Nope. He did. Now again, nope. it's. It's fleeting. Dude, if I was her, I would have been out of there. Like, you had so yeah. much time to get the it's fuck true. out. It's true. Now, I would have it, been long gone. It's fleeting, but you can see Michael's face. You know what I mean? Like, in, in certain shots, you see his sure. face. I mean, yes, the, the diehard fans are going to pause it and be like, we got, it, we got the face. Oh, you, you can know, see I get his it. face right I there. It. I can actually see James Duke Courtney's nose hair. Yeah. See, look at him. Look at him. He looks like he's had an all night bender. Looks like me on a Saturday night. Yeah. <laughs> there, you <laughs> there you are. Blood all there, over there your I face. Am. On a the Saturday night, leaving on. the bar. <laughs> the hell is going on? See, now imagine this shot at nighttime. Same is this shot. Castle again? Is this Nick? No, no. This no, is okay. James Jude Courtney. Everything is James Jude Courtney except for one shot. For the mirror shot. That's right. That's right. The mirror shot. Right, right, right. You're right. 
Now imagine yeah, this, this would have been night. so much better at night with the reflecting of the the, the car the lights. Moonlight the moonlight right here, the oh, moonlight oh, shining yeah. on him and stuff. You know, it would have made him You're telling me a during the day, less weird. nobody driving by is going to see this shit. Tell you, man. <laughs> and be like, what's going on? Again, it works. It still works. But, you know, hey, as a as a as a Halloween purist and as a fan, this is, you know, these are the nitpicks that, uh, <laughs> you know, that you I know, do. Exactly. We all do, you know. Well, it's temporarily pushing out from the local state house, baby. Lori knows. She's paying attention. She knows. See, and this is a good example. When people say to me... She's going full blood mode, first blood mode. 100%. She's not full blood, first blood. 100%. I dig this, though. I dig that she's got they, this contraption. They, they drew blood, first blood, not me. Yeah. That's, that's that's my best alone. I was just going to say, it sounded like Sly from, from Rambo. That's the best I can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, oh, that's, that's Sly hey. on the can. They, they, drew, they drew first blood. Not now, these trees look very sort of Georgia, but, uh, or not That's Georgia, what we have here. Um, I mean, yeah. I Carolina, mean, if, you, I if you've seen my horror pictures, you're yeah. going to see a lot of trees that are but, very similar to what we got over, they, what they yeah. have over there and what we have over here. Very yeah. similar. But I can, you know, I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, it, it still looks like it could be. Yeah, I, they, I think they dialed it in better with uh, the location in North Carolina um, mm. because you do see a bit of a difference in the aesthetic look because I do, I, as a photographer will notice those things. I'll notice like everything in the scene, you know, I'm looking at all different types of shit, whether it's the trees and whatnot. And you can, North Carolina is a bit different. Um, and right. it doesn't have the same type of landscape as South Carolina. So. Right. And most of Halloween kills was shot at night. Actually, I think all of it was shot at all night. of it pretty much. So predominantly. you could, well, what was it? I think it was. I don't think yeah, it, was, it any, was. I think it was. Uh, so you couldn't really see the foliage either, really. <laughs> you could, but you, could you can still better. tell. You yeah. know what I mean? You can like it, you can see even when they're in the streets and stuff like that. Right, you can still right. tell the South, especially South Carolina. There's a very distinct the way the tree lines are down here. Mm. I know jujitsu. <laughs> I know again, like. <laughs> Okay, Conor McGregor. <laughs> You're in my fucking house. Mom, you need help. I remember when I was, again, at the premiere watching this, there's one line here where she's, that she says when she's ushering Lori out of the house. Here it comes. It, it's this line here. I kind of rolled my eyes out the because nobody is, is not yeah, a dark place. Yes, yes, because <laughs> nobody is this naive. Yeah, Vince me otherwise keep the gun. No, you need to go. Yeah. Get out. The world is a very dark place. Yeah. Oh, she just said it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I missed it. The world is a is a is a nice and, and it's like God, I don't know. And I, see, now Hawkins, he should be the he should be the sheriff. He's got more sheriff gravitas in him, you know? Maybe he, he was does. good friends with Brackett. And that guy know? right there should be LL Cool J. Yes. <laughs> Something like a phenomenon. Big round melon breast. Oh, that's right. Melon breast. <laughs> Why you say melon breast? No, baby, baby. No, 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 baby, baby. That was good. I, I that exchange. That was that was good. That was well, fun. you know, it's fucking whatever. Hey, Look it's LL Cool J. Look at Barker. I give LL Cool J a pass on anything. Look at Barker. What Barker? You fired. Okay, Barker. You fired. You fired. It's over, okay? It's over. My favorite movie is Halloween Resurrection. Barker is my running mate. Motherfuckers. <laughs> Barker is my running mate. Uh, I'm getting better at it. It's not bad. It's not I'm bad. Not yeah. quite, I, I don't have it dialed in like you have it, but I'm, <laughs> I'm getting better at it. No, it's all right. It's fantastic. It's great. China. Do you see, okay, amazing. do you see what I mean? Do you see how at night here you see the streets and the yep. tree lines and stuff like that? Yep. Those are the things that I can pick up. Um, yep. At, you know, when I watch kills versus and, and see the location difference, but yeah. that's just cause I'm, I'm, my eyes are trained to see that type yeah. of shit. So here's uh, this is, well, this is, it, it's two takes, one take divided into two. This is one shot, of course, as oh, the one steady cam. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 We're coming up and uh, he grabs the hammer and then we cut and then we go inside 
And I believe this is the beginning of the one shot, I believe. And as far, there might have been a cut there, I'm not sure. But as far as I know, uh, they rehearsed this. I feel like this This was a kind of a wink and nod to what's her name from Halloween 2. Totally, um, totally. Mrs. Elrod. Mrs. Totally. Uh, Elrod, totally. right? Yep, yeah. yep. But this is, uh, they rehearsed this, and I believe they shot this 11 times, if I'm not mistaken. Good for them. And I would have been one and done. Dude, I can believe it because in the one that we shot and it's me, Billy, we had to go through two floors, light two floors, sure. the whole thing. You know, I've talked about it on this channel before. Uh, we rehearsed that for about an hour and a half or so because we shot that I'm eight I'm still times. disappointed in this moment. He should have fucking killed that baby. Should have. Should have shot it. <laughs> God, it's awful. I'm going to it's hell. Uh, <laughs> but we shot ours eight times. So it can be very tricky when you're moving through uh, the space and we were going down, you know, a set of stairs and down a hallway, a set of stairs and things like that. It can be very tricky. You know, you, everything's got to be firing on all cylinders. And and the first AC here, the focus puller, is pulling focus this whole time. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it, because everything's got to remain in focus and all this stuff, right? Like everybody's got to know their cues and now the actors come out and they would have been, they they either would have been watching or they would have had a walkie talkie in the home over there would have said, okay, now, you know, things like that, things like that. Like everybody is is sort of ready to go and firing on all cylinders here. And and this is one take and it's, it it, it is impressive in, in that respect. It's impressive for sure. To me, it's a little too warm. There she is, warm. my new friend on Facebook. I would have liked uh, a more of a cool vibe. Uh, you just uh, uh, study, uh, I never uh, noticed uh, that they really, up. the set designs, they really decked out her porch. That's the first time they I really did. noticed that. Yeah, they, they did. Really, and I, I liked I liked how they decked Marian out likes, her. Uh, Marion likes her pumpkins. She does like her pumpkins. She, Yeah, like I said, she seems like a really nice, uh, glad me and her were nice. connect on Facebook. I've talked um, to her many times, and well, not many times, but a few times, and she's yeah. She's, the vibes uh, I'm nice. getting, she's just very cool, down to earth, very chill. I like that. Yeah. Good vibes, good people. But it's funny, cause, and again, like for for me, I just would have had like it's fine to have this warm, balanced picture in the house. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, tungsten and lighting, right. absolutely. But yep. outside, uh, for me, I just found it a little too warm. That's all. And they could have dialed it back just, a little bit. Drop the, everything dro dropped the Kelvin blue light. down. No, that's not you know? that's not true at all. You fucking idiot. Anyway, um, here it comes. Now this is CG. Sorry, Marianne. This the knife through the thing there. That's all. That's all CG. That's not practical. She did have a mark on on her. Uh, she had um because what what she told me was uh, James walked up behind her with the, uh, the handle of the knife, but there was no blade. And so he stuck the handle. There was a marker on the back of her neck. Okay. He's, he stuck the handle, uh, you know, right up against right, the, right, to, right up against, yep. On the back of her neck. And she, you know, responded and did her thing. And then in post-production, they added the, the, you know, the knife and the blood. Well, and you know, it's, it had happened so fast. Sense. You really can't tell that it's CGI. No, no, you know I mean? no, no, no. And it's well done. It looks good. It's a great kill. It's a great kill. Man, I wish my high school was like that. Yeah, we never had any dances like that at my high school. We did, but like nobody themed dressed dances. up. Yeah, well, that, that's yeah. what I mean. Like that's themed dances? Nobody dressed up. Yeah, we had high school dances, but not like... Well... well I don't know. Did no, we... Not... We would have had a Halloween dance. I had to double dance. check with my friends. Up? I got I don't remember ever dressing up at a Halloween dance. Because our, our our October dance, I got to imagine like many people in the chat room are going to relate to this. Well, you guys should have the same thing too. Uh, in October, pretty much almost across the country in high school here in the States, uh, it's homecoming, uh, especially for yeah. the football games. Um, and we usually would have our homecoming dance in October. Um, and I just can't remember if we dressed up or not, if they themed it for Halloween. I can't um, remember anything. Like I remember going. To I know they would be themes. Like for example, right, right. one yeah, homecoming yeah, yeah. was like one homecoming year. It was the '70s. So because yeah. that that was when that '70s show was like really popular. Yeah. So we did the '70s. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, that was senior year, I think. Or saw when did that '70s show start? Ninety-eight. Ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. So yeah, so that would have been our junior year, our sophomore year. Yeah, sophomore year. And I remember doing a, a theme like that. And then we did when Titanic came out. We did mm -hmm. homecoming was um a night to remember mm -hmm. you know all that shit that that's what it was for us but yeah i don't remember us doing 
dressing up. I adore this little kid. I think he's oh, a he great, great little actor. However, I just didn't like the response when Vicky was being killed. I I I I didn't like it. Oh shit. You know, like I I wanted to see this kid fucking scared shitless. I wanted to see this kid crying. Yeah, it was kind of too comical. It was it was just played for it, it, his reaction was played for laughs. That's what it is. I'm not talking about played for laughs like fucking hysterical, but it, it yeah, yeah. wasn't, it wasn't. And again, maybe it was a performance that they could not get from the actor. He was very young. Maybe getting that kind of a performance from this young child was just not possible. That's entirely sure. possible as well. So they decided to play it this way, which is fine. It just, like, it doesn't ruin anything. These are just little things that I noticed and that I noticed little when nuances. I was watching the first time. I'm just like, ah, uh, I'm not feeling it. And I, I just, oh shit you know it's like uh, no dude i i want you fucking petrified I, I want you crying in the corner for your mommy you yeah. know what i mean that's what i want you know <laughs> i know i'm taking it so seriously we're, i'm true. telling you we're, we're dark we're we're, we're we're fucked up yeah you want him to be all crying in the corner i want michael to kill the baby it's like yeah. what is going on <laughs> we're, we're, we're fucked up individuals whatever oh oscar, like oscar stood stood no chance it's just no no chance. Did not. Um, with the girl though that I'm fucking working loser. on this photo shoot with, who looks like Vicky, um, this is going to be the first time I'm also. She's. We're doing two looks with her. We're doing a casual, you know, like Michael's kind of lurking in the background, you know, during the early dusk hours, you know, staring at her. Um, but she's going to actually get dressed up in a Halloween costume as well too. Um, and because I, I realized in all the Michael Myers pictures that I've done. No one is wearing a fucking Halloween costume. Like mm. not one person in any of the photos I've ever taken. Nice. Well, you got to get somebody in there. Well, that's when I was like, we. I, I need to start having people wearing Halloween costumes because the idea of these photos are it's supposed to be on Halloween night, right? Uh, there you go. Yeah. You're a fucking loser, Cameron. I'm still torn. Like... Cameron, I don't know. No, he's like, a loser. You don't fucking, I, you don't, you don't make not, out with some girl yeah, at a when he dance started, when you're at. When, when he, I, I, I didn't like him from the get go. And then when he's already cheating on Allison, I'm like, nah, dude, you gotta go. Nah, he's gotta go. <laughs> he's gotta go. And they knew that. I don't care if there was some little, uh, he's trying to get some redemption moment in Halloween kills. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. You don't cheat on that girl. Sorry. No, you're not, you're not standing there talking to somebody. You're standing there kissing them. You know, it's like, well, what are you doing? He, he's acting like he's Charlie Sheen in Two and a Half Men. And he's not. Nobody can be Charlie. <laughs> so. Charlie Sheen. Oscar sees this as an opportunity. And he was a horrible Bonnie. Yep. But she was a great Clyde. There you go. I want to see a spinoff with Cameron and Boy, Allison. now. No, 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 no. It happens before. It happens before. I want to see a spinoff of Cameron and Allison as Bonnie and Clyde and their own series. Let's do it. Roll reversal, baby. There you go. Roll I, reversal, I really, baby. Like, I'm still bummed that we only, we only got this with her because I really do like this character a lot. Yeah, it's it's just unfortunate that... And again, there are things we've seen in the Halloween ends trailer too where they give away um uh how certain vicky characters that's who die. We're, we're, if you're watching along that's who yeah. i'm talking about if you're if you're not just in case yeah. for reference well, we're, at, uh, we're at the scene where vicky's boyfriend shows yeah. up with the pumpkin and shit yeah yeah we're about half I, i'm guessing boyfriend. that's her boyfriend it is yeah, yeah it's dave it's a good name it's dave mccray it's dave mccray there it is you lucky son of a bitch you got the dry <laughs> hump vicky uh, dave i don't know what his last name is mccray <laughs> yeah can you imagine that's the character's last name. But this is, um, it, it just, yeah, I don't know. Ladies, just so you're aware, dry fucking is not fun. It hurts, especially if you're wearing jeans. <laughs> just throwing that out there. <laughs> it hurts like a son of a bitch. These are sex tips with Tony <laughs> Michael. Exactly. Tune in next week. But I get the line. I get why they, I get it, you know. Oh, of course. Yeah. I thought I heard like a noise or something. Yeah, probably oh, like shit. Julian taking a dump. For eyes. I just noticed that. The pumpkin behind them on the couch. Yeah. That's such a guy thing to say. Probably Julian taking a dump.
I saw someone standing by my door. Shut up, Dave. Imagine if Julian had died. Michael kills Julian. Mm, yeah, maybe. I think he's. I think Julian is like. He's close. If he's not, he's close to Tommy and Lindsay's age in the original. Yeah, he looks like he's like seven or whatever. Yeah. Eight, maybe. Yeah, something like that. I'm telling you, I shot him. I shot him in the high. In the high. In the what? The high. I shot him in the high. Sam Hain. It's actually Sal Wayne. What? It says Sam Hain. Goddamn blithering Nazi pig. Exorcist. Like, I like, you know, it's a cute little interaction. Well, here's the question. Them, if she went in there, she obviously lied that she, she that she checked everything because she clearly didn't check the closet. She didn't check the closet. She lied. Yeah. And I still stand by what I've always said, which is that uh, I think a better reveal would have been that when she goes to the closet door, uh, there's two things. She either opens it and uh, she goes to turn on the light. And as soon as she turns on the light, Michael is there. And it's like, whoa, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or she goes to the closet door, she opens it, she goes to turn on the light and the light bulb doesn't work, right? It's burnt out. So she turns around. So now her back is facing the closet door and she looks at Julian who's on the bed and she says, do your parents have any light bulbs in the house? You know, whatever, because this is out. And as soon as she's saying that and she's having this little, you know, conversation with the kid, you see Michael's mask, you know, slowly kind of emerge from the darkness behind her. Like that would have been really cool. It's not that this doesn't work, just opening the closet door and there he is. Okay, it works, yeah. it's fine. But, but there, in my estimation anyway, I think there's, a couple other different ways that we could do. And maybe they did do it. Maybe they did shoot that. Maybe they actually have B-roll of that. I don't know, you know, maybe, or they, they actually shot actual, those, those two things. I have no idea. Um, who knows, but who knows? Yeah. See this here. We're at, uh, for timestamps, uh, we're at 5826 and Michael's about to tear Vicky's ass up and there's the shaped stocks theme. Yeah. And I cannot wait to create these images with this girl on this photo shoot. It's gonna be great. But our twist, we're putting our little twist on nice. it. Nice. Oh, she's bleeding. She's bleeding, folks. She's bleeding. Dave, turn off your fucking hog, Dave, and go help your girlfriend. I do like this version of the shape stocks. I it's really good. do. I I play yeah, the good. shit out of this. It, it's yeah. on my uh playlist. Yeah, it's good. It like is when good. I'm working out, like literally, like if I need yeah. to kind of give myself some extra mode, I'm throwing this in. Yep. It's good stuff. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. And of course, he does... I believe this is the first time we see him do the head tilt there in this movie. That looks very Halloween, too. The mask from it that does. angle... Looks look, like right out of a Rob Zombie video, too, with the it, purple background. <laughs> it does, but the mask looks very Halloween 281. It does. But, you know, I mean, I didn't, like, this movie... Oh, the season of the witch masks. This movie, like Halloween Kills, is... Although I think this movie... Again, I don't watch these movies. I'm sure the chat room has watched these movies, like, 10 times over. Like, this is probably the fourth time I've seen this movie. Um, so, I don't watch these movies on the regular. Not because I hate them or anything. I just don't watch them on the regular. Um... But he's lying. He secretly has seen this like 5 billion times. I watch it every night before I go to bed. Exactly. But uh, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is what I, what I think here is, um, I fuck lost my train of thought. What was I fucking trying to say? Um, fuck. I lost my train of thought. I don't know. Yes. Chester. I know Ray's goodbye is the shape stock theme. They also were playing it there when they were killed, when he kills Vicky. Mm hmm. Damn it. I forget what I was going to say. Um, we're talking about... Oh, right. I was going to say that 
both these movies, although I think 18 might have a little more, both these movies, like, here's a moment here, obviously, where there's some suspense that they're trying to instill. But by and large, overall, the movies are kind of void of any real tension or suspense. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I don't mean void completely, but, uh, uh, but yeah, there's just, there's some, there was a lot of missed, for me, there was a lot of missed opportunities in this movie. Um, but it's not a, it's not a bad movie. It's, it's certainly not nowhere near the, like the worst Halloween movie or whatever. It's one of the better Halloween movies for sure. Now this is where Nick Castle is. This is his only cameo. And on the, on the gunshot, when the gunshot, when she shoots the window and you see the window break and the mirror break, watch very closely. If you're watching along with us, of course, or if you watch again in the future, you'll see Nick Castle. You'll see Michael, like there's like a, almost like a jump cut in the reflection of the mirror. You'll see him go from like this to all of a sudden, like up like this. And that transition is Nick Castle to James Jude Courtney. So you do see James Jude Courtney in the mirror as well. Um, but it's it's that transition between Nick and James. The only time Nick Castle is in this movie, he's not the shape anywhere else ever. Um, it is just that one little fleeting moment when Laurie looks up to the window and you see Michael tilt his head. That is Nick Castle. And here it comes. And this is cool because this is the first time she's laid eyes on him in this movie. And according to the canonical timeline, in 40 years. So this is cool. There it is. That's Nick, that's Nick Castle right there doing the head tilt. She looks, she shoots. Boom. There's James Jude Courtney. And that's James Jude Courtney. So that's it. It's like, what, five seconds? Not even. <laughs> Not even. That is literally it. He is nowhere else to be seen in this movie. And that's all right. Like, I mean, that's, that's a nice little kind of nod. He does like pinning people up against the wall with a knife. He does. Then again, I can't blame him. No, it's true. I, yeah, see, that's, you know, it's like, what the fuck are we dealing with here? I just wish this had more lurking. But again, there are certain moments in this movie that are like, ah, I like that. Oh, that, yes, right. yes, yes. More of that, please. Like the the the, the Allison chase. Fuck. It was great for 10 seconds. Then it just stopped. It's like, no, more of that, more of that. I would have had Allison like, you know, run into somebody's backyard, hiding behind like, you know, um, a garbage can or a car or whatever. And then you give yourself some opportunity to have some suspense where Michael is searching for her and she's trying to hide. And maybe she's got to cross, like really kind of prolong that and build that up. That would have been so cool. That would have been so cool. Dave, Dave. Shut up. <laughs> It's true. Shut up. Tell me how you really feel, Dave. Oh, fuck. People. I'm certain I'm... Oh, so you're the new Loomis. Thank God the deleted scene with him picking his nose. Have you seen that one? Yeah, I have. Thank so God stupid. they didn't They didn't put that in the movie. Thank... Another, another... Oh, my God. Confidently, another Danny McBride moment. Oh, it was all... Like, what the fuck? Here's useless Barker. Doesn't know what he's doing. Just walking around trying to look important. Nobody knows Myers better than me. This injured civilian. A psychologist. Look at him. He's like... Oh, damn, damn, damn. Listen to this, folks. Laurie Strode. Laurie Strode, it's you. You're the new Loomis. Laurie Strode, meet Dr. Sertain. Oh. I'm Michael's doctor. Uh, I'm Sertain. Yes. You're the new Loomis. Isn't the way he says that? I'm Dr. Sertain. I'm Michael's doctor. <laughs> Sounds like a creeper. <laughs> he does, but he's, he's got that grab he before. So I'm Dr. Sertain. I'm Michael's doctor. Love his voice. It's great. He sounds like something I would do with the Myers mask on in an intimate moment. (laughs) I'm Tony Michael. I'm your doctor. (laughs) Get a little talk. (laughs) There it is. I think the new Loomis line was probably a little on the nose. I mean, it's cute. It doesn't doesn't ruin anything. Sure. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, I guess. 
feel like you're in the new moment. No, you are. <gasps> I am? Yes. It's not happening, Oscar. It's not happening. Not happening, buddy. Nope. You are. He's going to try. Friend zoned. Yep. He's going to try. And you know what? I got him. Get, I got, look, I got to give him credit where credit is due. He, he makes the attempt. He tries. A lot of guys wouldn't even try. A lot of guys wouldn't even try. He tries. Yeah, he makes the he attempt. Tries. But I think yep. he might have come on too strong. I think he, he, he should have he, just. <sighs> He should have been, he should have been there for her during this moment and then said, and then, and then said, Hey, listen, why don't we get together tomorrow and talk about it? That's what he should have said. He's trying too hard. He he moved too fast. Yeah. He, she literally just saw Cameron make it out with somebody else. And like 20 minutes later, he's going in for a kiss, dude. Now he's drunk. Mind you, he is drunk. He is drunk. So it's probably the alcohol talking, the alcohol talking, but. I think he was moving too quickly, which he got put right into the friend zone real quick. 100%. He should have said, listen, I'm going to walk you home. If you're free tomorrow, let's hang out. Let's talk about this. And then use that as the opportunity to get a little closer to, get a little closer to Allison. Yeah, this scene right here, folks, if you haven't watched the deleted scenes on uh Halloween 18, which I'm sure you all have. You can probably find this scene actually on YouTube now. There's a scene where he picks his nose. And it's just so like, and he's going Stupid. for it. He's digging. You know, he's like going full tilt. It's ridiculous. Yep. This now, this is oh, this is uh, Karen's house. Karen's house. What are the police doing here? I thought the world was a nice and cozy and friendly place. <laughs> her Christmas sweater, folks. Her Christmas uh, sweater. So annoying. Well, oh, she's supposed to be her. playing this. Not naive... like literally hate her. Oh, but I, you know, know I, I mean. know. I know. I know. There is Christopher Nelson. Know, Shout out to Chris Nelson. Just, uh, her acting is just very, we're talking about Judy Greer. Her acting is just so. Well, I, I, I think maybe she's trying to come. I, that's maybe her role is she's naive and, you know, a little, a little dipsy. Mom. Man, that's wow. why I like when he gets her and kills, I'm like, yes. <laughs> like, mm. oh my God, it's such a great payoff. Yeah, but I didn't like the, the execution of it though. It's a little too, it was a little too stylized for me. Well, but, I think. I think in the kill sequence with her, I clearly, if you've watched any of those old Hitchcock films, that's what they were trying to do. Oh, for sure. It was, for it sure. was very Hitchcockian type film 100%. style. Um, the Janet Lee. Here it is. You know Here it I mean? is. That, Here it is. Sorry, dude. Here it is. Yes. Yes. No, no. Getting denied, she, okay. buddy. And here's the thing. She should have pushed him away like five seconds before that because look how close he got before that's she true. pushed him away. What was, what was, she, what was she thinking the he was keys. doing? Oh, you think he sh- she was doing it on purpose? Well, dick tease there, because you are right. I never noticed that she uh, look how she close let him get really get. close. Yeah. I mean, because look, look, look. When a girl is like a no, he ain't getting that close. You he know ain't what I mean? That close. No, you ain't getting any. Well, like maybe you ain't getting anywhere near that safe space. She's like, nope. Maybe <laughs> maybe that's proof there's a chance. Maybe she was thinking about it up until the last moment, and then she's like, no, your breath reeks. You're weird. Get out of here. Yeah. Oh, there it is. She dictates. Now him. this, this I like. I do like this moment when oh, he looks yeah. over and he Mr. sees. What's his name's back here? Mr. Elrod. Yeah. Elrod. Yeah. But I like that he's there. He looks over. He sees Michael standing there. Um, I like that. I like the way it looks, how Michael's in the shadows under the trees. I think that looks really good. I like it. I dig it. This whole scene. I mean, yes, Oscar is drunk. So the scene has a... It's not as serious and as as intense as I think it could have been because Oscar is playing, you know, he's he's having some laughs here. He's like, you know, did, 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 you know, have you ever had a girl like run out on you or whatever? Like, it's like, okay. Like, I get it. It works. I get it. But it's, it, it could have been darker and more intense. It could have been more intense. But the idea to use the motion sensor lights on, he's there, not on, off, on, on, you know, great, great. Totally awesome. Yeah. It's one of the more effective scenes in the whole movie. Sure. There he is. Like, yeah, love up? it. 
Love that shot, backlit, so he's basically silhouetted. Yeah, and I remember when that happened, the audience was like, oh, no. You could hear, like, people in the audience going, oh. Right. There he is, oh. I wish this scene was prolonged. Like, I wish we could have, like, prolonged these scenes that were very Michael and Halloween. You know what I mean? Oh, I don't yeah. Mean, I don't mean prolong, you know, for like 20 minutes, but just a bit longer than what they were. Build it up a bit more. Nurture it. Noodle it. Um, Maybe she did it. like him because she does go back. You know what I mean? Uh, well, she hears her. I mean, she's still, you know, still her friend, I guess. Ooh, he could have been faking it. Could have been faking it. Yep. He's dead. Oscar. This right here. Yes, 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 yes. This track is hot. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Listen to this, baby. Listen to this. Boom. Boom. Definitely one of my favorite new scores that you yes! in, in this uh, run. Yes, for uh, sure. Unfortunately, they cut this shit way too they short. Did. I was just saying that. I don't Listen. know why they did not prolong this and make it a good Michael I, stalking Allison scene. I was I, just talking about that earlier. You should have her right now. You should have her running. She's screaming. She doesn't know where to go. She's like, what the fuck? Somebody help me. She runs into somebody's backyard. She hides behind somewhere or something. But here she is. It's already over. It's already over. And here it comes. Done. It's like, no, what are you doing? Again, just as we're starting to pick up and get good, it's like, yes, you can feel the momentum, the suspense, the Halloween, the chase, the Michael, the stalking, the lurking. It's coming right. there. People right now watching going, Dave, calm down. Calm down, Dave, calm down. <laughs> but it's calm true. Down, Dave, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's but that's that what serious. I'm talking about. Exactly. It's not that serious. The sweaty nostril. But. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great shit. You know what I mean? It's just too bad that it, yeah, yeah, you know? And this is something that I don't feel is, you know, sometimes less is more. I think this was too short. I think this was, it, it doesn't have to be, you know, like I said, 10 minutes long, um, but just a bit longer, maybe an extra minute, maybe an extra minute would have been, I think would have served that really well where she like, you know, like I said, darts into somebody's backyard hiding or something, and he's there and hears breathing, you know, oh, and know, he's looking right? around and shit, and he's walk and and she, you know, and it's like an extreme close up of her face, you know, and she's looking at the camera. And it's like what the fuck? Like it needed that. It needed that. It needed that. In my opinion. Well, in my opinion, it didn't. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> people watch me; they hate when I do that. Well, not everybody, but some people do. Those that hate it are the people that do it. <laughs> just having fun folks everybody calm down um i wonder if he got peanut butter on his penis there i think he did that should have been an like an on-running joke to the I entire got peanut film butter on my penis yeah like well like at, at every opportunity he has to say it i think he should say it Absolutely. And then Karen turns and was like, yeah, we know, honey. We know. <laughs> we know you got peanut butter on your penis. No, she should have turned around. It's the only way it's going in my mouth. Oh, oh. God. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night. Uh, I don't everybody. think I don't think Karen would say that. She seems no. too prudish to say something like that. No, I don't think I, I, Lori, I actually, however, the way the well, way Lori is in no, this movie probably no, would. I actually don't think that Allison is in love with her husband here. I don't think so. I think she I think she tolerates him. You mean Karen? Karen, thank you. Sorry, Karen. That's right. Like that, that you just got all. <laughs> a whole you got very. Thing uh, there. You got a whole other thing there. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Oh, listen. Here's Paul the pumpkin again. Hi, I'm Paul the Pumpkin. <laughs> 11 days till Halloween ends, Halloween ends, Halloween ends. 11 days till Halloween ends, Laurie Strode. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. I hate the look no on problem. Sartain's face, too. He's looking at him like oh, all like serious comes. and devious. Here it comes, here it comes. I want you to run him over so I can put on his mask. He took that hit by he took that hit like a champ. 
It did. Although I will say, speaking as someone who has been hit by a car, it's very possible to get hit and get back up because I did. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course it is. Yeah. 100%. Here it comes. Here it comes. What the fuck is going on? Oh, my God. Dr. Sartain. Now, again, I hated maybe, this moment, man. I absolutely hated this moment. A lot moment. of people did. A lot. It, it, it was like a 180. A lot of people did. There are, there are people that don't believe that. There are people that go, no, no, no. It's here's why. And, and I, and, and, you know, but, but there's, there's two sides of the debate. There's two sides of the debate. That being said, I want to say again, like I said at the top of the show, I wonder if if they had carried through on the twist instead of Michael killing Sartain and then eventually, you know, essentially, I should say, dissolving the twist like five seconds yeah, later. And now he's about to put on the mask too. like, right. Oh, but I, man, I like, just no. wonder, I wonder had they carried through. I'm not saying it would have worked, but I wonder had they carried through on the twist, would it have then been more would would we have been able to kind of get on board with it a bit more? Oh, I remember when this happened, I was like, oh, what? God, he gets up and he's wearing the mask. He's like, wearing the oh, mask? Oh, man, this is terrible. No. Yeah, that, that, that's a Darth Vader no moment. <laughs> no, 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 George, no. And then instead of erasing it in Revenge of the Sith, he adds it in Return of the Jedi. No, no, George, no. <laughs> The unspoken nature is better. God uh, damn it. No one should ever put that mask on except, well, I guess I now we're going to have to see how that works in this new movie. But uh, at least up until this point, that's my thought process. No one should be wearing that mask but Michael. No, but but again, going back to what I was saying, if the twist had been followed through in, in the sense of he drove Michael to Lori's house because he wanted to, you know, see Michael and Lori interact. I mean, that's the whole thing here, right? He wants to see the shape in captivity or yeah. out of captivity, right? He wants to see the shape in Lori Strode in the wild and how they interact. Okay, fine. But that never happens because Michael kills him. Of essentially dissolving the momentum that like the twist. So it, it feels kind of, oh, oh, okay. And I just sometimes wonder, although I don't agree with the choice to do it in the first place, I wonder if it would have sat with fans better if they had just carried through with it and, and seen where you go with that. Uh, but you don't need it because Michael can, Allison can, can, uh, uh, I mean, see, essentially, you know, by doing this, you, you, you have Sartain essentially drive Michael down the road in proximity of Laurie's house. But you don't need that because all you would have or all you need really is Michael chasing Allison through the forest. And that gives you another chase scene, you know, with yeah. moonlight coming in through the forest and another chance for her to hide behind like trees and logs and shit or whatever. And she's hiding and she runs into the forest because she knows that grandma's house is maybe on the edge of the forest. And that's where she's trying to get to. Right. And Michael is chasing her through the forest. Michael's not going to Lori's house because it's Lori Strode, but he just coincidentally ends up there because of the chase scene between Lori or, or excuse well, me, between, between Allison and Michael. I mean, that's an angle that you could have done. You didn't need to have Sartain drive Michael, you know, three quarters of the way, right? I There's mean, also so a point that people are bringing up, and, and I will testify to this, okay? As somebody who, um, like, I have a 150-pound sandbag that I will pick up and throw, like, work out with, like, strongman strength training, and it's heavy, and it's hard. Yeah. And I did one the other day wearing the Michael Myers mask, and I, I struggled with it because I was struggling to breathe properly through the mask, and I did it. But as people are bringing up here in the chat room, Sartain is picking up a guy who's six foot three, dead weight, and yeah. carrying him with one arm to the car. He He's not doing that. Well, Sartain's he's ripped. Not, I, yeah, well, he's got to be either that or he's, he's on jacked. fucking steroids. Sartain, if you didn't know this, if he was topless, he's With fucking With one arm, jacked. right, that's busted from being yes. shot, by the way, nonetheless. Yes. And he's able to pick Michael up and put him in. Yeah, come on. Sartain has 36-inch pythons. I don't know if you know this. 
but he does. 150 pound dead weight when I'm doing that with sandbags is and fucking hard to do. I got to tell you that the humor conversation between Christopher Nelson and the other actor, uh, you know, the cop humor in the car, that didn't bother me. That bothered a lot oh, yeah. of people and people thought, oh, that's their care. tip to the humor in Halloween 5. No, it's not their tip to the humor in Halloween 5. It's just two, it's just cops, two cops hanging out, talking hanging out, shit. Talking <laughs> shit. That's what it is, right? And yeah. according to Christopher Nelson, it was largely improvised. So uh, that didn't, bother me at all i actually thought that was that was good it was good natural banter back and forth I, the I'm cops would do in that kind of a situation Sartain was able to pick up dead weight like that and bring him in the car with one arm <laughs> he's jacked man he's jacked there she goes right there she goes so this could have happened earlier michael could have you know like got up killed Sartain quote unquote, killed Hawkins, but didn't really kill him. And then Allison's like, oh fuck. And she leaves and runs into the forest and Michael chases her. You, you could have done it that way. You could have done that. That, that. That's a cool shot though of Michael. Boom. And then like, what the fuck? Would have been awesome when, his, when he says, say something if Michael farted. Yeah. <laughs> but he just, he steps, steps on, his, on his, head. his head. His entire Squashes head. Squashes it like a grape. I know, I know. His entire head is plastered, like just completely smashed into smithereens. It was a very Jason Friday the 13th kill, mind you. Oh, absolutely Friday the 13th. That was very 100%. not, that was way out of character for Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. His head looks more intact there. Ten years ago, he came out of all this. <laughs> Lori has been preparing for this day for 40 years. Her whole life. You know what would be awesome? If Michael is unmasked in Halloween Ends and he's got like a super badass 1970s porn mustache. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and they start playing porn yes. music. <laughs> or no, the Halloween theme suddenly becomes... Exactly, right? <laughs> kind of like that 70s porn theme, but it's the Halloween theme. Yes, yeah, it's... <laughs> that's the Myers house Dave there she goes there she goes she's running see this should have been like like fuck man I want a chase scene kind of show. a Friday the 13-esque vibe to this I know her running through the woods it is, but but this was an opportunity. Like this was an opportunity for Michael to be chasing her, chasing her, absolutely. And 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 that and and again, that gives you another chase sequence with some great music. She can be hiding, you know, behind a tree, a log, yeah. You know, they whatever. really and they have do do uh, Allison justice with the chase sequence. They they could have really capitalized they on it. And the they, best and they didn't. The best, most suspenseful moment in Halloween Kills, and we'll be talking about it when we watch it, um, is with Lindsay. And when she's hiding from Michael, who's searching for her, she's like hiding kind of down by the water in that little alcove by the tree or whatever. And she's there and the shape's looking around, whatever. Some real great genuine suspense and the moonlight's cascading in on her face. Uh, that, I, I wanted more of that. More of that in that yeah. movie and more of that in this movie. I'm with you. Oh, here oh, he comes. Here it is. Raise goodbye. Raise goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. I personally still call it the shape stalks. Because that's what it is. Christopher Nelson knocked, and I do knocked it out of the park this with these theme. effects, though. He knocked it out of the park with these effects. The, the I effects will say, I love the original. I love the original shape stock scene, but I, I do like this just slightly better. Slightly better. Mm. Because of that. That added extra bass note that he's adding into the, in the synth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great shit. This is great shit right here. Michael's here. Get downstairs. I remember this was a clip that they released in 2018. I remember watching this going, oh yeah, I'm fucking digging it. I'm What's wrong? It. Michael's here. Who's Michael? Yo, daddy. 
Yeah. <laughs> you're, oh, you're They're not daddy. brother and sister. Oh, They're not brother. That's just true. Your just real saying. father is <laughs> Michael Myers, ladies and just germs. Who's Michael? Your daddy. Your daddy. <laughs> Credits roll right there. What? Right? Everyone would have been like, wait, what? <laughs> what? What the fuck's going on? That makes no sense. Now, I will say that I... This is one of the scenes that I quite like in this movie when Michael bursts through, you know, the hand through yeah, the yeah. door and that kind of stuff yep. uh, and lifts. Some of this is not, I don't know if that's Christopher Nelson's hands. Some of this is not James Drew Courtney. I, I, I forget. Well, yeah, you can tell by the way the mask is fitting on well, the guy who's playing Michael at this moment. Some of it is, I think, and some of it isn't. I think maybe the smash was not, but maybe this now is or something like that. But I remember watching this in the theater and, you know, the sound design was great because he she, she gets fucked up. Like she she gets her head fucking smashed against that uh, door. And it was great. Fingers. Here it comes. And I remember this surprised me. I remember going, oh shit, they actually shot off two of Michael's fingers. I was like, damn, man. Gotcha. Nope, not yet. Not yet. Fucking no, it's hate coming. that line. I hate that line. She should have just held up the rifle instead of saying gotcha. She should have been like, yeah. bitch. 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 <laughs> Bitch. I still would love, and I'm hoping we'll get it because it has been filmed that we'll get to see the original ending of all this, how it was originally so going too. to be done. Uh, yes. I, I, just for comparison, I'd like to just, you know. Well, I mean, you can throw. Like, just to see what they were going with I, before I, they changed it. What I don't understand is I, I don't understand why you wouldn't throw it on as a, you know, alternate ending, deleted ending, ending special feature. Right. People are not. Oh, it's coming like in the 50th I, anniversary. I would imagine. Shit. I would imagine it would be coming. But I am still surprised it was not released least on the blu-ray or the 4k yeah. because in my mind i'm thinking i mean listen we know it's not the real ending i mean if you don't stick it in the movie and you stick it buried in the special features okay that we know we can compartmentalize and we know that this is the uh, not the real ending this is the other throw it on there man I love that shot. That was the as above, so below shot, as I like to call it. The way the yeah. fingers looked and how he was pointing down and that kind of stuff. I have a whole video on my channel where I talk Sign about the, the potential, yeah, the potential symbolism in that in that scene, whether it was intentional or not. But the way that they tilt the camera up and and you see uh, um, uh, him standing there again in this movie as far as getting what i like in terms of you know the execution of michael and him in shadows and all that kind of stuff that was a shot where i remember in the theater going ah there it is that good yes yes that's that's how you want to present him for the most part you know not every second of every you know shot but but that was a really nice moment you know what I mean? Uh, really nice shot. Really sort of encapsulated the shape there. You just kind of see a silhouette and his blown off fingers and stuff. It was great. Yeah, I've, I've come to like this movie and appreciate it more because of Halloween Kills. Unfortunately, it's yeah, not Yeah, there's for... only a couple of moments that I'm kind of like, eh, you know what I mean? The, the gas station, I think that should have been done at night. I, I'm never going to sign up for the Sartain shit like that twist. None of that shit. Well, like, I, no. I, I, for me, I still, I still am that this is a very good modern day slasher horror movie. It's just ultimately not a great Halloween movie. It's um, decent. But when I say not a great Halloween movie, I don't mean it like, you know, resurrection, you know, you think I, I, or, you know, part five, I'm, I'm talking about in sort of the things that I see as missed opportunities, sure. um, that I think would have elevated the film even more in my, in my estimation. Um, but at the end of the day, Halloween kills has made me like this movie more. However, it's not for the reasons you would hope. It's not because Halloween kills is so good that it's made me like 18 even more. It's because sure. Halloween kills for me, in my opinion, not all of it, but you know, for the reasons that I've always said is such a drop off that it, it, it it's for the opposite of what you would hope, <laughs> you know? Um, but we'll see how ends maybe ends will be so phenomenal that it'll make kills even better or, 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 or that much better form or, no, we'll make kills better for me, I should say. Who knows? Who knows? Sure. I don't know. Well, I think we can all agree. You know, there's a lot of great highlights. You know, we got a great soundtrack. The mask is fucking awesome. I Fantastic. can't wait till 
uh, my guy finishes my and there's some, uh, tw- 2018 mask. Um, so I just want to say that there's some, again, this moment here where Lori is walking through the house with the shotgun, sure. going into rooms, you know, s- securing rooms and stuff. Th- there's some suspense there. Not It's not palpable. It's not so thick you can cut it with a knife. And that I think is what I'm kind of hoping for. Um, but, but it's, it's, you know, it's, yeah, there's some, there's some moments. Some moments. Yeah. Like I was saying, the soundtrack, the mask, James Hugh Courtney's mask portrayal of Michael, um, Allison, you know, the character really yeah. loved her, uh, Vicky. Uh, unfortunately, I just think we got shafted, you know, we, we could have gotten a little more with her. Yeah. Um, I think she could have been one that they could have at least carried through until maybe this last one, maybe she finally, um, gets it, but her character was so underdeveloped and wasn't in much of the movie, but her, what she, the screen time she had, I thoroughly enjoyed the character a lot. Um, yeah. I mean, like you said, there, you know, some minor tweaks here and there, and this would have been a really good Halloween movie, but it's not one that I, you know, my, it's not the worst my, in the series by a no, long and, shot. And my go-tos will always be every October. It's going to be one through four. You I, know, th- those, those will be my go-tos yep. forever and ever. Um, but I could see myself once in a blue moon getting in the mood to throw on this recent trilogy. Um, not one that I'm going to do very often, but you know, unless ends, like you said, blows me so fucking out of the water, like, holy shit. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm talking, when I say that I'm talking like making me feel like I'm watching Halloween four and that type of feel. Right. You know right. I, mean? I got you. Yep. So yeah, that's the bar I'm setting See, for ends. Here's, if again, ends can meet that bar, then all right, cool. I sound like a broken record. Now, now this bedroom, Lori's bedroom, the layout of the bedroom, most of you know this now, is actually uh, the, the exact same layout as the bedroom in the Doyle house at the end of the 1978 original because they were originally going to reshoot that ending. See, there's the closet and opposite the closet is the balcony. And they were, it's the exact same. They were originally going to reshoot the ending, believe it or not, and you can look this up online. Christopher Nelson has denied this, but Bloody Disgusting covered it and John and has quotes from John Carpenter. They originally brought a script, a very early draft, very early draft to John Carpenter saying that they were originally going to have uh, re- reshoot the ending of the 1970 original where Dr. Loomis flies up the stairs. Michael kills Dr. Loomis and Laurie Strode grabs Michael's... Um, uh, Dr. Loomis's gun, and Laurie Strode is the one that shoots Michael off the balcony. That is true. Bloody Disgusting covered it. There's quotes from John Carpenter. Uh, I don't know how true it was that they were, or, or, or how close they were to actually doing that, because apparently John Carpenter shot that down really fast and is like, why do you want to change the ending of my movie? Don't do that. Um, but that is why they actually built this bedroom to do that. And since they already built it, uh, they thought, well, we might as well just use it for Laurie's you know, bedroom now, right? Uh, so that, so if you look closely, it is the same layout as uh, the I gotta kind house. of agree on all things not to do, reshoot the ending of Halloween. That would be one of them. Well, and, and what's so, what, what, what I don't understand about that is that you just render every copy of the original Halloween obsolete. Because every yeah. single copy of Halloween that's ever existed, the millions of copies that are out there, the millions of copies that are in the stores do not have that ending. So is yeah. Halloween 78 canon or not? Because yeah. I, we, our, our, it makes our no franchise sense. has enough confusion as it is. We don't it need does. to add more to it. It makes no, so I can't, so I would watch Halloween 78 shot. And the, yeah, that's a great shot. That I is a great that shot. shot. The split light on his mask yes. is so fucking good. Yes. Sorry, I didn't yes. mean to cut you off, but I love it. No, that dude, shot. it's good. I agree. It's one of my favorite shots in this film, for sure. I've shared that on social. Look, with, with all the issues you can poke at in these new films, the one thing that is firing on all cylinders is James Jude Courtney is the shape and the and fucking the mask. mask. Yep. They and all finally, three of them, how they progressed. Yes. Yep. They finally got the mask right. And it can elevate what might end up being, you know, to some people, not everybody, right? Because whether you enjoy a movie or not is subjective. Um, but for those of us that are like, oh, well, you know, I re- you know, you know, maybe we're feeling a little bit of, eh, we can at least go, but fuck, does he look great? And man, is that music on, you know, on fire and all that kind of yeah. stuff. And and it helps, it helps, right? It helps to sort of oh, yeah. uh, mask, but. And like I said, you got great characters in here, as I was pointing out with Allison and Vicky and Lori, obviously doing Jamie Lee doing her thing. 
not a big fan of Karen, but whatever. I mean, not every character is going to land with a movie goer as they watch a movie. You're going to have some characters that are just going to be like, you know, like Karen and her husband. Right. Mm-hmm. I was like, whatever. Didn't really care. Hawkins, you know, like you said, he, you know, he should be the sheriff, not the whatever he is, deputy or whatever. Um, Hawkins should be the sheriff for sure. Um, oh, fire poker, fire poker. What is this? Black Christmas? No, but, um, but yeah, I, I never understood that creative thinking because I, I'm thinking my, my first thing would have been, but David, Danny, okay, you want to do that. But then is the 78 canon or is it not? If it's not canon and you're just literally rebooting and remaking, and this is the beginning of your movie. Okay. All right, fine. But you're going to confuse people. People are going to watch Halloween. And at the end of Halloween, Dr. Loomis shoots Michael six times and he falls off the balcony. And then people are going to pop in Halloween 18 and Michael kills Dr. Loomis and Laurie shoots him six times off the balcony. What, that, that makes no sense. What, I, I don't understand. Unless the thought was actually 78 isn't canon. This is a soft remake reboot. And we're just opening the, 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 uh, prologue is really this girl babysitting on 19, you know, uh, 78 and this guy show, you know, whatever the case is, but you couldn't do that. It, it's too no. embedded into the pop culture zeitgeist to do that. Yeah. So thank goodness they didn't do and that. It, all, it would ruin the character of Loomis. Yeah, it would, it would. And, 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 and it would confuse so many people, so many people. So thank goodness John Carpenter said, no, let's not do that. But that's real. I mean, you can look that up. Bloody disgusting. How does she know the gun is loaded, by ago. the way? I didn't see her check the chamber. She just picked know. it up and yep. started to point. There it is. Gotcha. See, she's trying gotcha. to sound vulnerable see, and scared. And she feels she said that's- bitch instead. Like, bitch. <laughs> Are you there yet? I'm still behind Or gotcha, her. bitch. How about that gotcha, bitch? I haven't heard her say it yet. Are you there yet? No, no, no. Oh, she, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm with you. I'm okay, just saying yeah. that's what she should have said. Gotcha, yeah. bitch. She's about to. I can't do it, mama. There it is. And right in the face. Now this I didn't like. I, it's chi. I don't know what it is. There's something about. It's, it, seems, ha- it seems like they were trying to do like what he did to her in the original. She's yes. doing it to him. It doesn't look like this anymore to me. But I remember when I watched that. And I believe that's Aaron Armstrong right there lying on the floor. I think this is Aaron Armstrong that does the sit up. That's not James Jude. I believe, I believe that's Aaron Armstrong if I'm not mistaken. Or at least it was Aaron Armstrong that fell down the stairs, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, um, when I first watched this at the premiere, when Lori, you know, suddenly emerges from the darkness and says, Happy Halloween, Michael, or whatever the hell she says, I remember thinking it looked digital. It doesn't look like that to me anymore, but it kind of just looked like, like it kind of looked weird. It didn't, I don't know. There was something about it that didn't sit with me right. And I thought Happy Halloween, Michael, was just a little too... 80s Arnold Schwarzenegger one line like it just felt right. like it, it just right. felt like you wouldn't say that you know um but again I mean I'm, I'm you know these are nitpicks in terms of production value and presentation they're the best Halloween movies we've had in years well, the way it looks or anyways yeah well yeah I'm yeah but I, I'm saying in, in terms of like the quality and the filmmaking and the you know, the, it's, you know, it's, it's very competently made, well done films. I don't agree with every creative decision, obviously. Um, you know, I, I like this movie better than kills. Uh, there's things in kills I like too, but overall kills just didn't work for me at all. Um, and it's made me appreciate this movie a bit more. So I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to see where we're going to settle with, with ends. But, but at the end of the day, um, you know, they're not, it's not like Halloween resurrection or something. And this piece of music is great too. The whole fucking soundtrack is great. James, my man, standing there amongst that fire, dude. Must have been toasty. His balls were roasting. And the house that's burning here, I don't know why they show this dollhouse because a lot of people are like, oh, it's the Myers house. It's not the Myers house. It's not because- well, I said that earlier. People like you know, say that that's- that, not even close to what the Myers house looks like. No, I, I don't know if it was just a, a house that is supposed, like it, like there it kind of looks like it could be because you can't see sure. the, 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 the middle um, window, the middle window. That's right. right. But uh, it, it, and the Myers house doesn't have 
windows on the roof either. So I, I don't know if it was just in the spirit of the house. I remember thinking that, uh, oh man, the the speculation on who this guy was and my sequel concept idea, it's bracket. And my sequel concept idea video, which I have on my channel, it's a direct sequel to Halloween 18. And I, you know, I'm it, it's, it's to end the entire thing. I pick up where this leaves off and the guy in that truck is actually bracket driving them to the, uh, to the hospital. That would have been cool. And here we go. And boom. And I remember thinking it kind of ended a little prematurely. Abruptly? I, yeah, I felt like it needed like an extra five minutes, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Hour and 40 minutes. Yeah. In loving memory of Mustafa Akkad or memory of Mustafa Akkad. Yeah, that's good. That's nice that they did that. Uh, but that is the movie, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Halloween and 18 kicking off the month of October. If you are watching after the fact, comment below and let Tony and I know your thoughts on Halloween 2018 and where you would place it uh, in a Halloween ranking, perhaps. Do you, you know, when you watch Halloween now, do you consider Halloween 18 the official sequel? Oh, well, it is an official uh, sequel, but in your own headcanon now, are you no longer Halloween 281? I mean, you know, you might still like it and enjoy it, but now for you, you watch Halloween 18 is the true sequel now to Halloween 1978. Maybe that's the case. Comment below and let Tony and I know and get the discussion going. So let's head over to, to the uh, chat room and see. I know some super chats uh, did come in, although a lot of you guys were quiet, which is good. I was, I was worried that uh, I was going to have a lot to catch up on. Um, let's see here. So the last one I had was, uh, Nick, love that. A power sad card. No, can't that. Jeffrey M sends in $2, says, do Indiegogo for Chucky film. $5 million goal I support. Not going to happen, but I appreciate the super chat. Jeffrey M follows up with, can I give Pumpkin Paul a kissy kiss? No, I'm sorry. Pumpkin Paul is not in a mood right now. Lou sends in four ninety nine and says, what's up, Dave and Tony? Thanks for making me laugh today. Michael farting on Sartain's head. Have a good week. Stay safe. <laughs> I think it was you that said that, right? I know. Look what I started. I, I People love it. People love toilet humor. Uh, not everybody. Matthew Farisi right. sends in nine ninety nine and says, I actually prefer Lori in 18 over H2O. This movie holds up for me, but I wish they ditched the Sartain twist and kept the blue lighting. Uh, also, a bit more stalking and suspense still liked it. I just want to take this opportunity again uh, because for whatever reason, well, I guess it's because not everybody watches everything I do. Uh, and obviously, I'm now talking about this buried in a you know two-hour stream. Um, but it's important to remind people that when I talk about blue lighting, I don't mean that I want the entire movie based in this blue. Like we're going to get the film into post-production and we're just going to color correct it into this blue hue. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about... You're talking about getting it in camera. I'm talking about getting it in camera and I'm talking yeah. about, you know, the nighttime scenes um, being more daylight balanced as opposed to tungsten balanced, right? So there's more of this, this cold, cool, uh, w pale blue, white sort of pale kind of whitish blue, which is really what moonlight is. Really the, the moonlight that you see in Halloween or, or that will, that you will sometimes see in horror movies, uh, is actually often too blue for reality, but for cinematic purposes, it works really well and it conveys to you what that exactly is. But Moonlight really isn't that blue. It's more of an off pale sort of uh, whitish. It's got a bluish tinge to it, but it's more kind of pale white. Um, but the problem is too, is that if you stick with that, uh, if it's too white and too hot, it might give the impression that it's one of the big set lights, right? So it's not going to necessarily convey that it's moonlight. So often, you know, DPs, uh, you know, will will overcompensate and 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 go maybe just a little little more blue than what is say natural. So it's clearly communicated to the audience that that this is moonlight. Um, but that's really what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about that the whole movie's in blue. And listen, I know that that for 
you're, you know, some people out there that may be like, well, yeah, duh. Listen, I've had people reach out to me and actually like try to rip me a new one. So you just want everything in blue. That just blue and uh, it's case of blue. And I'm like, that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. In Halloween 18, the nighttime scenes, not every moment in every shot, but where you really notice it is the one -er, uh, where Michael, you know, they, they um, track him from house to house. Uh, you notice that the outside has a, a a very strong, warmer tungsten feel. Now, that's fine. It, it's not right or wrong. I mean, you know, but for me, I would have had more of a cooler vibe. That's all. You might see it as a nitpick. That's fine. That's fair. It probably is. Uh, but those are things that I look for, right? Because to me, the 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 aesthetic and the 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 way that a halloween movie looks is a character in and of itself and i think it's part of sort of the dna of you know uh, of what a halloween film is now in halloween kills you saw a shift you actually saw not completely but you saw more of that cooler sort of vibe in halloween kills and you're seeing a little bit more of that in Halloween ends in the trailers and stuff. I mean, not completely, right? I mean, obviously the DP, David Gordon Green, they have, you know, he has a vision. The DP is trying to match that vision. They work together. It's a stylistic choice. They want to, you know, whatever, right? It works. It's fine. But I do notice, and I don't know if it was because, you know, of people talking about this or if it's, or if it's just because of the vision that he has, I do notice there is a difference between the two movies from 18 to kills. There is more of a lean into that cooler vibe, uh, which I appreciate. I, I mean, it's not all together, but it's, that was one of the things that I, that I did notice. Anyway, I'll shut up now. <laughs> I, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> uh, it, oh, it was just, uh, talking about, um, uh, uh, I sort of drifted off. There. Oh, sorry. The blue lighting. No, that's okay. Hey, hey listen, okay, sometimes when I go on my rants, I drift off. And then I come to and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I was talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what I was talking it's true. about. true. $2 Sam sends in four ninety nine. and says, hey, Dave, just wanted to say I hope you're doing well and can't wait for Halloween ends. Thank you, buddy. I really appreciate that. I am. And I'm looking forward to it, too. Not long now. 11 days. Okay. Uh, so. All right. Let's get these here. Uh, some super chats came in. We got, uh, G oh, I got that one. Oh, I got that one. Okay. Hang on. Matthew Freesey got that one. Got $2 Sam. And the next one is this one. Pumpkin head, pumpkin head. Oh my God. Pumpkin heads in the chat room, ladies and germs. Uh, Pumpkinhead sends in $10 and says, Hi, Dave. Just wanted to comment on the genuine appreciation for the channel. Well, thanks, man. It's fun, intelligent, and respectful, and engaging. Really enjoying the content. Looking forward to Halloween ends. Cheers. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. That's a really, uh, very nicely, uh, communicated compliment. And, uh, I appreciate that. Thanks so much. Uh, sweet tea. The tea is sweet tonight. Sweet tea sends in $10 and says for the channel, my friends, please be safe too. Thank you, sweet tea. I hope everything down in Florida is going well for you down there as well. Uh, Matthew Farisi sends in $1.99 and says, what would you guys rate this movie from one to 10? Um, I would well, probably rate it no higher than a seven. I mean, maybe like a seven, 6.5, seven, somewhere in there, which is a good mark. I mean, a seven out of 10, it's a good score. Yeah. It's a good movie. I, you know, it's, I'd say like that six yeah. and a half for me, you know, yeah. six, six and a half. Yeah. Um, you know, it, you know, when, when I did that's, the ranking, I think that's where I placed it when I did my review was a six, cause I gave it a C plus. So what's that in the, cause in the States, the percentages are a bit different than seventies. Oh, 70s, it, oh, it is? Okay, higher. see, yeah. a C here in Canada is in the 60 percentiles. Okay, so, that's D. That, you're in the D range. Yeah, D. yeah, exactly. Ds for us are in the 50s. Yeah. So um, it's kind of weird that way. But anyway, I, I, I gave it a, like a C, C plus w would be my top. And it hasn't really changed. It hasn't you know, really changed. I mean, it's, it's fine. You know, it's, it's fine. It's, it's not, I know some people might be like, really? You're not giving it? But yeah, no, I, I agree with Tony. 6.5 on the high end, seven, yeah. like on the high end, you know? Like if I were to do my rankings now, I would say it would go probably like the original Halloween 4, Halloween 2, 81, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, 
then probably this, then probably Halloween 2018 and kills. I kind of flip flop between those two. Um, and then H2O and then um, Rob Zombie's first Halloween. Uh, and now we're getting to the bottom of the barrel and doesn't matter. Right. I got you. <laughs> so. $2 Sam follows up with another four ninety nine and says, uh, hey, Dave. Uh, no, excuse me. He does not say, hey, Dave. He says, if Halloween ends is a super financial success, how quick do you think another Halloween film will be put into production? Well, um, I can tell you that I, I, again, when you say another Halloween film, do you mean like another Michael Myers movie? Probably not for a bit. I think there is going to be a rest because you have to remember that after Halloween ends, Universal and and Blumhouse no longer have the rights. It goes back yeah. to Malick. So either they're and it's going to depend on what he wants to do, really. Hundred percent. So either he has to renegotiate with Blumhouse and Universal, or he's got to look elsewhere. Blumhouse is the else, production yeah. company, so they're responsible for you know getting the movie made, right? And Blumhouse, I don't know if Blumhouse. I mean, listen, if it's a cash grab, I'm sure he'd continue to make it. But I, I just I have this feeling that they kind of want to move on now. Again, oh, I the, think he's got his sights set on Nightmare and. Friday. Whether he'll get it, that's another story. True, true. Uh, that's a good point. And so it all depends on what Malik wants to do. He might he might be like, you know what? We've had these three movies because you don't want to overstay your welcome. Again, remember, although these movies make, you know, they, they are making a lot of money, at the end of the day, they're diminishing returns. They will continue to make less and less and less. You know, generally speaking, that's what happens, right? It's not like, sure. it's not the Marvel movies where like every fucking movie you put out is a billion dollar film. Halloween 18 uh, made 254 million worldwide. Halloween Kills made 130 something or whatever, right? But the, the pandemic and, you know, uh, you know, Peacock and all that kind of stuff. Halloween Ends is probably going to make maybe less or maybe around the same. And that, like, it, it's, it, it's not, the longevity of it is, is, basically what I'm trying to say is I don't think you're going to get a sequel to Halloween Ends. So I think that is done. That's done. It's over. When do I think we're going to get another Halloween movie? Michael Myers, maybe towards Within the, the next end. 10 years. Yeah, probably like maybe towards the end of the decade. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Um, or they may want to go a different route. Malik may want to try the streaming route. Maybe he wants to do something with Se with Season of the Witch and and I try think, and I, and I, and I won't be route. shocked on that because there is a Season of the Witch has become obviously it's become a a cult classic. It's got its it underground underground fan base. Um, and I believe that there is enough of a fan base out there for Season of the Witch to do a straight to Netflix uh streaming series or something like that um and not go theatrical yeah. and not have to rely on the box office so i i won't um yeah you know what cody i i'm glad you said that because i was waiting i was i didn't want to cut dave off but yeah there is a rumor out there and again i don't know how true this shit is that daniel harris has met with a cod there you know i no, don't it's, know it's it's not a rumor it's, it's it's actually true according to danielle harris now danielle so, harris has said take it for what it is <laughs> yes but 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 the impression that i got and i don't want to speak for danielle right. uh i'd have to actually listen to the audio myself but the impression that i got was it was not like this formal and maybe it was maybe it was but the impression i got was it wasn't this formal meeting that was being taken seriously it was sort of a shooting from the hip hey malik here's an idea because they ran into each other in some elevator i'm not saying that's what happened it's just the way she tells the story or i i, I read it actually in in um an article and and i just got this like it, i don't think that there's any sort of wheels in motion here and to be honest with you the idea I'll be totally honest with you the idea that danielle pitched not a fan not a fan don't like it at all i think it's corny as fuck and and now that's me that's me i think it would be better for the jamie lloyd character if if you want to get serious danielle you say five never happened i know that erases a movie that you were a big part of and that er I, you you've been in two halloween films and halloween is your 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 or, your, your, your it's it's your bread and butter it's your claim to fame to the to the horror genre it, it's what you're most known for 100 i get i totally understand it right totally understand so the idea of 
uh, pitching an idea that removes one of the, it doesn't remove it literally, it, you know, will always be there to watch, but removes it from canon, uh, it can be sort of hard. You're like, oh, that's, yeah. that's, you know, I'm now I'm down to one movie. Her, you know what I'm saying? You're right. Her, her best option, any option would be to retcon five and six and pick up from where four left off. If you're good, like you said, if you're going to get serious about this and, and like, pitch an idea yeah you know you don't you, you you don't keep anything five because the thing is like we've talked about with with retconning five and six you still have uh rachel as a character to bring yeah. back with you in this you know new new thing with you and her um and i think fans would really be more open to that idea mm -hmm. than what was the idea she pitched again that she said, I forget. I forget what it was, but it, 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 it was lame. It, it was, kept it, her, was, it kept her psychic like, abilities there no. and it kept, no, it, it like, did. It did. I, I think it did anyway. It was, no, I know. Like I'm that. just saying like, yeah. no, we're, we're not going but, down. But that look, look, again. look, look for those that are holding their breath, thinking this is going to happen. You have to understand that part of the thing, part of the thing that the studios want to do is peel to the mass general audience. And this is going to be confusing as fuck. And I'm already seeing people, you know, in forums and stuff that aren't Halloween fans going, oh God, another Halloween movie? Oh God, another, oh, I'm so tired. Of people are tired of it. It's, there, there needs to be a break. You know, there needs to be a break. And, and I, I, I there don't think the arguments, Dave, I, I don't think they're coming for you, Dave. Listen, I don't think the right thing to do is, oh, this is over. Now let's just jump right into retconning, you know, five and six and doing a sequel to Halloween four and presenting that people, people, are, the, the, the general audience is going to go, what the fuck is this? Didn't we just have this? What is going on here? That's yeah. why trailers are cut the way they are. That's why they show things the way they do in trailers is to get the general audience into the seats. They can't play too inside baseball because it's because the general movie, you know, the general movie going audience isn't going to know what's going on. For Halloween fans, we get it. But we aren't the vast majority of the money making machine. Halloween 18 made $254 million at the worldwide box office, not just because of how ha those weren't all Halloween fans. Those were horror fans. Those were casual fans. Those were people Dude, that just wanted to people. Those were people that just wanted to go see a scary movie in October. You know what and I'm saying? I convinced my father, who hates horror, right. to take my stepmother to go see the Halloween 2018 right. film. Um, as a, as a night out with his wife to, you know, watch a scary movie. And so that's what you, that's, that's very true. Cause he didn't go see kills. You no, know what I mean? Of and course not. Of you, course not. A lot not. of people didn't go see no. it. And yeah, what did, what that would do, the, the jokes would be never flying. Oh, they found a way to bring back Michael again. Of course they did. Of you know, course, like, because they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they, they don't, most people are not connected and knee deep in the, I think that the, 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 the like us. I mean, we are right. part of a horror community and an even nichier community than that. If that's that's even a word right. nichier uh a halloween we are community a close -knit family that the horror community uh, it's a close -knit well, family hey we're part of the horror community but we're right. also the we're, we're the halloween community we're in this country which isn't very big and this country is called horror community it's a big yep. country but in the terms of the general entertainment world movie going population it's very small so we're in a country called the horror community and inside that country we're in a town called halloween town because not every horror fan likes michael myers and not every horror fan likes the halloween movies and not every horror fan cares about them to the same degrees that we do so you know again yeah the horror community is large but the halloween community within the horror community is is an even smaller subsect or you know section i should say of the community so you know it's it's again it's it's if you want to make money you got to appeal to everybody. And that's why horror fans will watch a trailer and go, oh, I don't understand. I don't understand. The, not the regular movie going audience, like your dad, watches the trailer and goes, that's great. You know what I mean? They're not, they, they, they don't pick up on those, you know, those details and all the fingers and the, they're not picking up on that. They don't, they don't pick up that. They just see a guy in a mask, looks like Michael Myers. Boom, I'm in, let's go. You know, that's what it is, right? And that's why they market it that way uh, because they need to get other people in too. Um, so I just don't see suddenly this, this you know, uh, 180 happening where, you know, all of a sudden next year we're getting uh, an alternate Halloween five and it's going to be theatrically released. And it's going to start Daniel Harris and Ellie Cornell. It's like, 
I, yeah. I, I don't see that it's too, it right now, wait a bit, let this marinate fast forward. Maybe the ladies will be in their fifties, but maybe then you approach it. But now right away, no, I think if Malik is serious about, uh, not losing any momentum in terms of the brand Halloween, I think he's probably going to look to streaming and maybe season of the witch. That's what I think. That's his best play. I mean, it really is right now from a business, you know, let Michael rest. And, and I said this a week ago on, on our, on our stream, man, let's uh, let's, you know, let's get a little eighties nostalgia here and let Freddie and Jason, both of them, I mean, both characters, yeah. let them rule the box office for about six to eight years with a few movies. You know what I mean? True. Um, yep. I would love to see that because the, the, the two characters have been dormant. Uh, now for just too long. I mean, way too long. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I, I think it's, um, it's time to resurrect those two and let them, uh, let's get a little eighties nostalgia feel and, uh, yeah. Season of the witch goes to streaming and, uh, you know, fuck. we'll see. Yep. Yeah. AK channel TV sends in four ninety nine says, Tony, what do you do for, uh, sand for your sandbag? Oh, training. Sandbag. I just started and I wanted to know what exercises and weights you use as you seem like a strong dude. Well, Tony's got 84 inch pythons and 36 inch thighs. So uh, go ahead, Tony. My thighs are big. I will say that. I got, I, I've worked hard. Uh, for sandbag training or for weights, I do predominantly dumbbells and kettlebells. Mm. Uh, my, my dumbbells go from um, 10 pounds all the way up to 80 pounds right now. My kettlebells go up to 70 from eight, 18 pounds. But with kettlebells, it's different. It's different weight uh, going up. It's not going up every five pounds. It's usually going up about every 10 to seven pounds mm. uh, with kettlebells. Now, as far as sandbag training, honestly, man, I looked up a lot of that shit online myself. Uh, there's so many different. Rogue has a few um, videos out there, Rogue Fitness, because that's my two of my sandbags that I own are by Rogue. Uh, but I, just basically the basic strong, you know, and, and strong man sandbag strength training is other things that I look up. Uh, you can look up guys like Brian Shaw, Eddie Hall, um, two great strong man competitors. Um, I forget my other guy that I, I like Robert, uh, Robert. Oh, I can't, I can't pronounce his name. He's big dude, but he's part of the, the, the he's friends with, uh, Brian Shaw and Eddie Hall. Mm. Uh, but anyways, um, you could do like what I did the other day wearing the Myers mask. I did a conditioning training. So like I would, uh, with my 25 pound sledgehammer, I was doing overs and overs and overs, you know, 10 reps per side. And then I would do sandbag toss, which is basically get on it, get the sandbag up and toss it over one shoulder, then toss it over to the other shoulder and do as many to, to failure. Um, now with the mask on for that video, I only did a couple because as I said earlier, I was having a hard time breathing through the mask and I was getting to a point where it was starting to get dark. And I was like, okay, better stop. I don't want to pass out here and fall flat on my face. Um, so you can do that. You can do toss overs. Uh, you can do sandbag carries, which is really great. I do sandbag carries a lot where, uh, where I pick it up and, you know, I'll carry it a certain amount of feet and then carry it back. So you can do front squats with it. Another, uh, I do a variation is an offset squat. Um, I can't do it with the 200 pound bag yet, but I can do it with the 150. Whereas you have the sandbag on one side and you just do a squat and then you do it around the other side and do another squat. Um, but just, YouTube buddy, you did. That's what I did. I just, I bought a, you know, a 150 pound sandbag and a 200 pound sandbag. Um, and I got my sand at home Depot, five bucks for a 50 pound bag. Can't beat that cost. So to get all the sand I need, it cost me about 20 bucks for the 150 and it cost me $25 for the 200. So you're not, uh, dropping. And I get the play sand, uh, that what, mm -hmm. what you, what, what parents would put in, um, their children's, uh, I just like, I, I like the fineness of it and it doesn't, if it rains, it doesn't get, um, it doesn't get like all like clumpy. That's what I was trying right. to think yep. because it, that, that's what, the, that's how they make that specific. Uh, cause sometimes I'll leave my sandbag outside and it'll rain and shit, but, uh, don't lie. It's for your sandbox. I know. Right. I got my sandbox. You got your sandbox um, playing with toys. Oberst. Thanks, Cody. Yeah. Robert Oberst. He's part of the Shaw Hall. Um, mm. great. Watch them. Just they, they're always giving tips on strong because that's really what the sandbag is in kettlebell, uh, heavy kettlebell trains. That's what they're designed for. They're designed for strong man training. And it's a different, it's not like just going in and doing reps and stuff because you're, you're using your body in a different way and you're developing more of a, a fundamental 
uh, strength rather than just like, Oh, I'm benching 300 pounds and you know, right. whatever. Um, and it's great. I like doing, I like incorporating those styles of exercises into my traditional regular, you know, weight training and stuff. Um, cause it's, it's a great way to keep yourself fit strength, uh, and, and finding a different strength inside of you that you, uh, didn't have. And, uh, yeah, you know, you'll believe me, dude, you look up sandbag training on YouTube and you'll find like so many of them out there and then just come up with from there, come up with your own shit, you know, put it into your own type of conditioning routine. There you go. Uh, yeah. Celloween sends in one pound and 79 cents and says, must've been Ted Hollister and not Hawkins in H 18. Uh, is shit Earl. Shit Ted Earl. Earl. It's Ted Hollister. I'm still waiting for the movie of who was the guy in Russellville? Oh, Charlie Bowles. I want a Charlie Bowles, Ted Hollister, and Bucky. Yes, yes. <laughs> Ted Hollister, <laughs> Charlie Bowles, and Bucky walk into a bar. Yes. $2 Sam sends in four ninety nine. says, I know it would never happen, but would you rather see a continuation of the Thorn timeline or H2O timeline? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> that's a hot, tough question. Can I declined in it can, can i plead the fifth no here? It's, a, like, it's, a, it's a super chat can't decline gotta pick one well no my answer is n neither <laughs> I mean, really i mean that's the end of the day like I'm, I'm gonna be honest neither i do not want to see a continuation of the h2o timeline at all halloween resurrections dog shit absolute dog shit and i wouldn't want to see a continuation of halloween six either because i think halloween six not near not i mean not quite dog shit like like resurrection but you know it's still shit it's not dog shit. Yeah. It's more like maybe maybe it's cat shit, you know. <laughs> you know, like I mean, I, neither really. That would be my answer. Neither. What about you, Tony? Tony's going to try and pick one. I am. I'm going to try to pick one since it was a super chat. I'm probably going to go with Thorn <laughs> Trilogy um, because uh, I just fucking despise Resurrection. So <laughs> it's awful. It's awful. I just, you know, well, I guess like it's, you know, it's, it's on the, it's on the bottom of my list of in the rankings. So, yep. um, like if I had to choose to take with me to a deserted Island, Rob zombies, Halloween two or Halloween resurrection, I'm taking Rob zombies, Halloween two. Well, you know, what at the that, end, what is does it, that tell you, <laughs> is it the end of the producer's cut of Halloween six where, uh, my, yeah, it is where Michael walking out like Bogart, like Bogart. <laughs> well, you know what? Okay. Maybe, maybe I, I want to see where that goes now. You I want to see, why not? Maybe, I want to see, Maybe Michael. Michael meets a girl and, yes. you know, yes. Uh, yes. You know, I they, want have, to... they have, they have a moment at an airport and that's you know. it. That's it. I want to see where this What's goes. What's the line in Casablanca? What does he, what does Bogart say to her? Uh, What's... I forget the line there. God, I forget. I was going to say, I, almost my gonna, I don't I, give a damn, but yeah, that's, I know, gone, but that's, gone, that's with gone with the wind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Shit. Here's What's looking at you. Here's looking at you, kid. Here's that's looking it. at you, kid. Yeah, Michael Myers. Michael Myers, that's his first line yeah. ever in a movie. Here's looking at you, kid. Yep, there it is. Reese Wilson sends in $14.99 Australian dollars and says, a break will serve the franchise well. Make people really miss Michael Myers in Halloween and then bring it back in a new, fresh way, completely divorced from the 78 film and the legacy of Laurie Strode. I could not have said it better myself. Reese Wilson, ladies and gentlemen, Reese Wilson. Reese Wilson, yes. Hard into the paint with that. Hard into the paint. I could not agree more. I mean, that's what you got to do, right? Uh, you don't want to overstay your welcome. I think Halloween fatigue is setting in, even amongst Halloween fans. Now, maybe Tony and I, and or people like me especially, who do a lot of Halloween content, feel it a bit more than people who don't do this kind of thing on YouTube, because we're always, you know, I'm exerting so much energy talking about it. Um, but yes, I think the principle of what Reese is saying is correct. Let it marinate for a bit. Let it, you know, go do something else. Let the fans miss it. Let them wonder. The 50th anniversary is six years from now. Maybe that's a good time to do something something i don't know you know who knows yeah i had that i had that discussion the other day um briefly with someone who i don't know if they were getting hostile with me when they sent me a dm but they were just Wait, like Why somebody on the internet getting hostile i've never heard of this right i've never heard of this <laughs> well i didn't i don't know i that's why i didn't want to I, I i i couldn't I don't know the tone um that the person mm -hmm. was coming but they're asking true. me that question like why uh why don't I just create Michael photos? And for that same reason, I would mm. be so burnt out if the only 
content photos I were creating on my photo shoots was just Michael Myers. It's a breath of fresh air when I do a ghost face or I love doing the leather face shoots because I'm in the perfect location for it. All the locations I do those at, those have been some of my favorite shoots to do with uh, my friends. Um, and I love the Freddy shoots. You know, we get really creative with that. So like when I'm doing the other characters and then I come back, like I am this month, you know, doing some Michael shoots, it's that freshness. I feel refreshed. I feel creatively mm -hmm. refreshed. Like, and I'm talking to each of the girls that I'm prepping for on the shoots. We're like we can do this. We can try this. Let's, you know, let's, you know what I mean? And I like that mm -hmm. enthusiasm. If I was doing it every shoot, I would be like, I, I I would just, yeah, I would go insane. I need that breath of fresh air. I need to look at something else. I need to creatively think of something else and another character and then come back to Michael and crank out an awesome photo shoot because yeah, fatigue will set in when you're just constantly, constantly, 100%. always doing one specific thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Uh, David Coe sends in 499 says, Tony, just wondering if you are watching Terrifier 2 in theaters or streaming. And Dave, will you even watch it? Love the show, guys. Uh, Tony? Probably I'll just do streaming. Um, if I don't have to go to the theaters, I won't. I'm telling you, wait for the, wait for the, it's not going to be really a selfie, but I'm going to have my fucking Doritos in a beanbag chair in my oh, box fuck, of I shorts. I love Doritos. I love Doritos. <laughs> I do too. Well, see, what I wanted to do was I wanted oh, to be in my come. Halloween boxer shorts watching the movie in my beanbag chair with the bag of chips that Dave's been promising to send me for like I nine know. fucking I years. Forgetting. I gotta <laughs> do that. God, and my grocery store is like next door Stocked to my P.O. box. Right? I got it. No, I got it. I do. I do. I literally do. That I, I was going to be this. the game plan, but no, uh, now I'm going to have to well, just settle for maybe good old I can, American may, Doritos. Maybe I can send it priority. I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't think it would get here in time. No, probably well, not. My two, 10 day, it's cutting no. close. Um, I, I am going to watch Terrifier 2. Um, not in the theater. I'm not going to go to, well, no, I can't go to the theater to see it because uh, it's only playing in the United States in the theaters. They, they did not negotiate any sort of deals with Cineplex, which is the big so technically you would be here. international right no we are actually considered domestic okay, okay. so whenever so your numbers that you do they count that as part of the box office revenue correct so when you oh, see i never when, knew that yes when you see domestic total that okay. is us and okay. canada Got it. okay uh when and worldwide is everywhere else so um we are part of the domestic total unfortunately but mexico is not right mexico is not no Okay. Mexico is, is considered international. So um, when it comes to Terrifier 2, uh, they've, I don't know what deal was struck or what negotiations, but they struck a deal obviously to have it play in, I think it's 700 theaters uh, across the US, which is great. Um, but uh, our big theater chain up here, our AMC or our Regal up here is a theater chain called Cineplex. And it's, it's the big one up here and uh, it's not playing here. So it's just in the US right now now that doesn't mean that maybe if it's successful or maybe they won't uh, maybe in the future who knows but right now no I, I i can't see it unless uh i watch it on streaming so that's where i'll be that's where i will watch it um and i am gonna watch it because uh for two reasons i'm curious to see this fucking i mean i'm it's no secret it's not my kind of a horror movie the exploitation Same. splatter I'm over the top yeah. blood guts and gore torture porn not for, for me, not because it makes me queasy or because I think it's, oh my God. No, it's just not, I just generally don't like those kinds of films. However, I want to support independent filmmakers because I'm an independent filmmaker and I want to support what these guys have done. I want to support them in uh, how they've been able to step up their game and I want to support them and I want to show that, um, uh, well, I just want to, I've, I want to watch it, show my support, watch it, watch, show my support by watching it and then see if I like it. I liked the first Terrifier. Believe it or not, I did. Um, I knew, I knew what it was and, and you know what it is, but I, I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, but I haven't watched it since. I probably won't watch it again because it's not my kind of movie, but well, this we could movie, do, you know, we could do a stream of it. We well, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, yeah, we could, we could. Uh, but with Terrifier 2, um, of course, it's, it's you know, everything I'm hearing, it's Terrifier 1 on steroids. So <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that from purely sure. a curiosity perspective. And I want to support the guys, you know, and gals, the guys and gals, of course, gals. that yeah. that made this movie. Uh, but it's, even if I could go see it in the theater, I probably wouldn't because it's not something that I uh, would necessarily go to see. Although maybe I would, maybe I would because that's a way to support them as well, right? Through the box office. So maybe I would, maybe I would. Um, but yeah, no, I'm 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 definitely going to watch it for curiosity uh, sake. Whether I like it as much as everybody else is seeming to like it, I don't know. I mean, you guys know me, right? It, it, it's not, generally it's not my kind of movie. However, I'm going to watch it and 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 I will probably let you know my thoughts on it based on the context of what I'm watching it in. So I'm not going to go in, I mean Dave it's not your kind of movie so obviously you're going to hate it. No, not at all. Sure. I'm going to watch it and I'm going to remember the kind of movie it is. It's this kind I know what I'm getting. So I'm going to judge how I feel based on what I'm seeing. And by all accounts I'm sure I'm sure they've done a great job. But, you know, it's it's really what Terrifier really is. It's a slasher movie, yes, but it's actually what is called a splatter movie. That's actually a real term. And splatter movies were really uh, I think it was George A Romero, believe it or not, that came up with he the term it. splatter films. And yeah. and it really is uh because it was to it was to differentiate there's a lot of like back in the 70s there were a lot of these be like meat cleaver massacre these yeah, beef, meat cleaver like, massacre the hills have crazy, eyes is often hills considered have that. eyes crazy over the top horror yeah. movies that yeah. that's kind of what terrifier is it, it, more well, or less and, paying a, a tribute to because you don't, I don't sure. know if, you, they, if they make them anymore really do well they? They, well you, that's true like they, catch it that harris did i guess well, is right isn't that but hers? terrifier is a is a bit of a terrifier is an exploit like there are splatter films and then there's exploitative films and 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 these are films that that are really about like real excessive gratuitous gore right. you know body mutilation you know all that kind of stuff and that's what terrifier is terrifier really and i'm not it's i'm not knocking it i'm just let, let's call a spade a spade terrifier and certainly terrifier too is a exploitative you know gratuitous over the top torture porn body mutilation blood that's what it is and it makes no apologies for it and that's a good thing there's nothing wrong with that because there is an audience for it but that's really not my kind of horror movie but yeah I got to watch it. Like I watched the first one because I was like, well, I got to, what, what? Somebody gets split in that. Well, I got to watch this. You know what I mean? Because curiosity gets the best of you, right? So now that they've elevated it to steroid level, I'm like, well, I got to watch this, but I'm going to watch it within its context and 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 be fair that way. Um, but is Terrifier 2 a movie that I would probably watch on the regular? Probably not. You know what I mean? Because it's not. I'm more of a theater of the mind, mood, atmosphere, suspense kind of guy, right? So I was just, um, I was just saying that, yeah. reciting that shit last night. Why? Because I watched the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You know, right. for a movie that has the title Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you yeah. would think it would be one of the, but it's not. There's next to no blood in it's that true. film. And what Toby Hooper did, he made your skin crawl with the way he filmed that movie, the framing of shots at certain times and drawing out scenes to make you feel uncomfortable. He, that, that, that to me, I will take that type of scare and it still gets to me that dinner table scene when she's there and it's they're intense. just fucking with her. It is so intense. I will take that and that will get under my skin more so than watching Terrifier. Terrifier, I'm like, all right, they're getting fucked up. Okay, <laughs> moving on. You know, like it doesn't affect me the same way because it's just. Well, and Terrifier it, is, is one of those movies that, that especially since, again, I haven't seen part two, but obviously I, I know people in the community that have and I've seen their reviews and I've watched the reviews and everything they, you know, they're saying about it. Clearly, this is a you know, exploitative torture porn event film. And the reason why you go to watch this movie is for exactly for what reason. they're doing. For that reason. Yeah. I want to see Art the Clown, which is a cool character. You got to give credit where credit is due. He's a cool looking character. And David yeah. Howard Thornton does yeah. a great job. 100%. Um, but clearly the draw is Art the Clown, you know, killing people in the worst over the top graphic possible ways imaginable. That's what the film is. And that is a very niche 
section of the horror genre. Now you're, you're, you're seeing a lot of sort of horror channels watching it, but that's because it, it's really like, I, I think there is a curiosity. I, I don't think generally speaking, like somebody like Cody Leach, for example, I don't want to speak for him, but for example, I don't think generally he's a torture porn guy. You know what I mean? But he watched it because he was at the festival and he's like, well, I gotta watch it. I gotta watch this. This is crazy. It, it, it's really getting the curiosity of people because of how crazy it is. It's like when the, you know, that first hostile movie came out like 15 or 16 you years ago. You know, I ago. still have yet to see that movie. Well, but now that is probably probably as extreme as like a major studio would get, right? But, it, it, or, or, or like the first Saw film, you know, those, like, those are like, oh my God, back in the day. Well, this, this you know, Terrifier 2 is this elevated to the 5,000th degree. So that's why people are going to see it. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying that's what it is. It knows what it is. It makes no apologies for it. And that's why people go to see it. You're not watching it for the story. You know, you're not watching it for the great characters. If it has yeah. great characters and a bit of a story, great, then that's awesome. But at the end of the day, you're going to see over the top, gratuitous, crazy violence and blood, guts, and gore. And okay. And that's why I'm going to watch it because I'm like, well, I got to check this out. So yeah, definitely, definitely going to watch definitely. it. And I want to support the guys and gals. Because uh, it's not easy fucking making movies, man. No. Uh, let me see. Uh, Colin Murdy says, Dave, you should check out P2. I've seen P2. ATM, I've seen ATM. Grindhouse, I've seen Grindhouse. You're next. Haven't seen You're Next yet. Really I've decent. You're next. Y you have? Is it good? Yeah. Really decent yeah. modern slashers that should get more credit. Uh, P2, yeah, I thought decent. was great. Yeah. P2 was really good. I like that one. That's the one with the girl in the underground parking lot, I think. That's good. Um, okay, we gotta go. I or I gotta go here anyway. Uh, let's see. Uh, David Lee Barron sends in four ninety nine. Says to our Lord and Savior Tony Christ, what did you think of the movie Elvis? And Dave, do you do the stereotypical Elvis voice? As the snow flies on a cold and gray Chicago morning, a poor little baby child is born in the ghetto, and his mama cry. Uh, there you go. What did you think of that? Well, you 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 thought it was great, right? I loved it. Yeah. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies of the year. I uh, would probably give that the, the favorite of the year. Probably as of right now, it still goes to Top Gun: Maverick. Um, but definitely Elvis is up there. Um, you know, will he, will Austin pull down the Academy? I don't know. I mean, look, I've yet to see whale and there's a lot of great talk with Brendan Fraser performance with that movie and even Oscar one as well too. Um, I finally managed to like, cause I got halfway through and it was just kind of one of those things like, well, I'm halfway there. Let's just fucking, let's get to the end zone with this Dahmer series long. I thought it was just very long mm. and there was just certain there were certain episodes in the 10 part series that I'm like, I could have done without like this. I didn't really need it, but I will say the guy who played Dahmer, um, damn, he's Quicksilver in the X-Men movies. And I can't mm. fucking remember his name now. Um, really good performance. So, um, you got some heavy, you got some heavyweights come Academy time. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to see the first time but because, where I, because it's a limited series, the Dahmer stuff that probably won't be Oscar bait. It, it okay. would be, it'd be Emmy contention probably. So then because it's considered you, television. So then you're probably going to be looking at a, probably a showdown between Frazier and Austin Butler for the, the Academy. And possibly. I'm hearing, I'm hearing like nothing but just, great shit on this whale movie i gotta Frazier's still see in. the whale movie. yeah and i haven't seen it yeah. yet either but i'm you know i i, I want to see that shit but yeah overall great movie um yeah great movie yep Corey underscore 392 sends in 499 says day you've been following the channel for years i love your content you're a hell of a guy bittersweet that the halloween journey is coming to an end well thank you Corey, for being such a great supporter for uh years that's that's awesome and yeah it is it's bittersweet you know what i mean i'm 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 looking forward to the break i'm looking forward to uh you know diving into it's me billy chapter two and 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 getting that going and and uh and talking about other things on the channel too we got indiana jones five next year you know we've got and, and who knows what other awesome shit that's going to come down the pipe so uh hopefully you guys all you halloween fans will stick around because you know i i know we love halloween but uh you know there's and if there's, not there's you can more, always uh more follow stuff me on facebook because i'm going to crank out those halloween pictures for you to keep the content there going. you go there you go um all right i think we've got Wait, all the super I got a question oh sure yeah yeah 
Okay, because I finally watched the Black Phone over the weekend. Oh, it was yes, good. The Black Phone. It was good. Um, I enjoyed it. Clearly, remember, I don't know, this was like a few months ago when we were talking about how horror is going to need to refresh itself. And uh, remember I said to you, they're probably going to have to start pulling from some real life scenarios uh, mm. to start, you know, using as ideas and inspiration. And clearly my takeaway right away, John Wayne Gacy, obviously, you know, with it could things- be. The, well, actually, the black phone comes from a short story that was written by Stephen King's son. So, but I'm saying the ideas, you it, know, it could I mean? have the been, yeah, burying, you have to ask burying, him. Yep. burying the bodies under, yep. you know, the, the, the in the basement, taking, sure. you know, you dressing up kind of like in a clown, like even though it wasn't totally a clown, but you know, I what I mean? there, was, yep. there was the clown representation there with Ethan Hawke's character, how he kidnapped the, the kids and shit. So, that my point is, there's very a John Wayne Gacy esque without actually going into that story, you know, you could see mm. that there's uh. Um, pulled some ideas uh, from from what happened there. But my question to you is, in the scene, because I want to get this movie and watch mm-hmm. it, right? The, where the kid is watching the black and white film where the blood comes out of the sink and it's red, what fucking movie is that? When the dad is in the other room sleeping and he's looking to make sure dad isn't like watching? Sorry, say that what... What is- horror movie is the kid watching in his living room when his dad was sleeping on the couch? Remember, it was a black and white horror film, and then blood I- starts coming out of the sink. And oh, it's yes. Red, and you actually see, do you know what that movie I know it's a real movie, and I've seen I- that scene before. I just don't know the I name of the movie, don't. and I want to get I the movie. I don't, but somebody in the chat room might. So, well, somebody in the chat room, help me the fuck out. It's not it. No. Somebody in the chat room might know. Open. If not, you can hit me up on Facebook and let me know. It's true. If you don't know. So. That's true. And I, I just want to address, because this is somebody I haven't seen before, uh, Serena or Serena McLean says, David, read comments from us regular folks and enough with giving these money chats all the attention. It makes me angry. Well, something you have to understand, okay, is that uh, depending on the streams that we do, we will often have a lot of people in the chat room and we still have 220 people that are watching us live. Sometimes when I do a Halloween stream on my own, I can have four or five or 600 people watching at a time. And when the super chats come in, they will always take priority. And the reason why they will always take priority is because people have paid money to ask a question. Now, sometimes uh, I do streams where there's only 110 people in the chat or 150 people in the chat, or sometimes it's a big turnout, but not a lot of super chats are coming in. I, you know, I, I have no control over what streams it's, it, it's sort of a crapshoot, right? Like what streams, a lot of super chats will come in and what streams won't generally Halloween streams. There will be a lot of super chats. Um, and they take priority because people have paid to have their questions answered. So it's not personal. I'm not ignoring you. Okay. Uh, but that is the case. And, uh, you have to understand that. And, and if, 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 if you don't like that, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know what else to say, Uh, but if you follow me for any length of time and the chat room will be able to tell you that over the years I've been doing this, I am very generous with my time and I'm very generous with um, uh, answering not just super chats, but regular questions as well. Now, as the channel continues to grow, we're approaching 30,000 subscribers. As the channel continues to grow and as more people continue to tune in, that's a risk, right? More people may want to, you know, ask and, 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 and donate to the channel channel and, 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 uh, uh, you know, um, send in super chats. Um, so it's, it, it's not personal. Um, you know, it's I always business, try to, it, it's, it, in the Godfather. it's business. Yeah. But it's, it's just, I, I, I need to do that because they've, 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 they've paid to have their question answered. Um, I don't, but one thing you have to, one thing you have to remember is that I don't just answer super chats. Some streams it might feel that way because there's a lot that's coming in. And then by the time we get done, it's kind of time to wrap up the show. But there's many times where I don't. And uh, that's just sort of, you know, the nature of the game. But one thing that I, that I'm very proud of that I, that I do a lot is it doesn't matter if you send in, I mean, it depends on the question as well, but it really doesn't matter if you send in a dollar 99 super chat or a $50 super chat. I do not discriminate in terms of time and how long I spend on a question. So if you send in a dollar 99, but it's a really good question, 
I don't take the mindset of, oh, well, it's only $1.99. I'm only going to spend five seconds on this. Not at all. There's been $1.99 Super Chats where I've rambled on for like 20 minutes. So uh, I'm very proud of that. Uh, it's not- Let alone, you know, I'm going to state the obvious that Dave and I could both be doing other things for three hours on a Monday night. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. So, but but it's it's something that, that sometimes I- Sometimes people need to learn to be appreciated for what they get. It's true. Well, that's true too. That's true too. And, 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 uh, uh, so just, just be, uh, aware of that. And if you don't like it, well, I don't give a fuck. There's the door. Don't <laughs> let it hit you in the ass. Yeah, and I don't mean to be mean, but it's just, you know, at the end of the day, dude, like, you know, you're not paying for this shit. So shut up and sit down. Um, all right, let's see all here. Right, we gotta um, go. yeah, we gotta go. We gotta go. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, folks. That's going to do it for episode 166 of Two Dudes and Some Bullshit. Uh, comment below and let Tony and I know your thoughts on Halloween 2018 and where you would rank it. Has it changed for you since Halloween kills? Up or down? Good or bad? Let Tony and I know in the comment section below. You are all amazing. You know you are. Even Serena. I think I'm saying that right. You're amazing too. Just don't be a dick. All right, here we go. Thank you to our super chats, of course. Or our super chats. Our moderator. Well, thank you to all the super chats, of course, that came in as well. But to our great moderators, Frank Riker, Tab of the Shore, Darren Sands, Chris Baber, Cody Snyder, Andrew Stevens. You guys are amazing. Thank you for doing what you do. I really appreciate it very much. Tony, any last things you want to say? Later, bitches. Later, everybody. Later. Have a great week. That's going to do it for See us. See you next Monday. See you next week. All righty.